Oh, uh, excuse me. Gobble Gobble Theater here with oh. you. Oh, well, not technically, no. We're we're a week before. Well, Murray, I'm trying to get people in the mood. Oh, boy, do we have something planned? Well, if you're 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 on Twitter, you already know, but I'll get into that at the end of the episode. We'll get into it. We'll but. get into it. What's very strange is I went out this morning to buy some books and I come back to our beautiful vault here. Nerd. And you have a whole fucking crew at my house, like hazmat suits. What is going on, Murray? I'm filling in the acid pit. I'm done with it. How? Well, technically, it burnt a hole through the bottom, so it's just, <laughs> it's gone its way to hell. I don't know what happened. Does acid dissipate or just keep burning well, Murray, through things? you made the same mistake that Walter Pickman or whatever his name is, Jesse Pickman made, where Pickman. you put it in my bathtub instead of in like the, the special plastic containers that you're supposed to put it in. Don't you remember? That was in the first season. You got to go back and well, watch that. Are you talking about Jesse Pinkman? Yeah, what did I say? You said Pittman. Oh, okay, whatever. I'm thinking yeah, Seinfeld. Yeah. Well, what do I. I told you I'm a novice to this acid thing. I thought it was going to be great. It just. You got a great TikTok video out of it, though. I that was did. It's, <laughs> it's blowing up. It's, it's trending, I think, is what they call it. <laughs> yes, that's what they call it. Yeah. I like that you try to stay five million <laughs> miles away from it. I believe they call it trending. <laughs> okay, I don't know. What, I don't you know this terminology. You absolutely know that terminology. Uh, I don't. I, I figured that. I figured like every platform has their own word for it. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. I see what you mean. So I figured that was like a Twitter thing was trending. So what are you know. moving on to then? If you're not going to do well, that, well, I was thing. greatly inspired by this because, you know. Keep, we need to keep the the flame underneath the feet of our guests. We can't let them get complacent. Mm-hmm. So the next guest thing, I'm thinking, no, we're done with the acid. That's not happening. Okay. We hunt whoever gets the lowest. How have we download. not? I, I mean, we're for real. I mean, we get we we live on. We got this island, what a thousand acre island? Like we have all this real estate we could be doing stuff with. That's right. And we could get some exercise out of it, too. Really? We get a little exercise. You get the nice breeze. We get to go to places we've never even like seen on the island because yeah. we mostly hole up here in the vault. Right. And if they make it to sundown, they get to come back. <laughs> and, <the next laughs> and re-record? <laughs> no, for the next month where they also got to risk their life. Right. Okay, I Nothing like it. It comes cheap here, but people, you got to like earn it. You okay. haven't earned it. Oh my god. I, I heard about that Astro Astro World incident with the eight people dying and I just scoffed. I said they haven't earned it. Griff, that happens every week in England. We we explain and our buddy Stuart will back us up. We're huge in England. And every every uh, Wembley Thursday, Stadium, every, Wembley Stadium sells out every time. every week. I, I We've incredible. had people get crushed and died. Yes. But they go, hey, we're not going to give up Golden Globus Theater. Yeah. So we're going to we're gonna accept it. It's like COVID. It's like we're going to accept these deaths. Yeah. We're not going to do anything. We're just going to accept that there's going to be some deaths. What I find very amusing is we talk about how dead people can't vote. Well, we can have Bernie dead people situations happen at our shows where they bring the corpses. They say, you finally have earned it. And they, like, toss them around the shows and everything while we're, you know, they're listening to our wow. beautiful recording. I didn't know that. It's a very interesting situation going down there in uh, old England. They're crazy. In they're, <laughs> they're their own world, and I yeah. love it. I love yeah, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You're killing it over there. I wish you would all download it individually, though, instead yeah, of... Yeah, I know. So we get that one giant <laughs> download, and that's... <laughs> yeah. It's like 80,000, 90... I don't know how many people can get into Wembley, uh, but yeah. It, that's just one for us. That it's doesn't help with the ads, you know? <laughs> oh, Murray, I got some more good news about our numbers, though. Lay it on me. We are the number one Christian podcast for the month of November. Yes! Is that true? Yeah. We ni- we killed it. <laughs> that, that's the one week we were Christian boys. We show up. We out-Christian all the other Christians, and we take home. Within wow. a week, they had to declare us the winner because we kill everybody else's averages. So there you have it. We could just show up and rule the Christian uh, uh, we, section of podcasting people world. People do love our Road to Revelation movies. I, 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 I hate it that we have to do these, but give customers always right, they say. I don't believe that, but, you know, it's, give the people what they want. It's the worst, yeah. That's not no. true. <laughs> um, do we want which way do we want to go here? Do we want to talk about um, our dearly departed friend? Yeah, we got we just I learned today, but I guess it happened a couple days ago. We lost two greats this week. We lost fucking Dean Stockwell, mm. greatest lip syncer in movie oh, history. Holy shit! Just powerful seeing that scene. So good. 
He's fucking suave. Suave? Fucking suave. Yeah. And we lost somebody near and dear to our house. One of the Golden Globe is family. Yes. Oh. I don't, I, sorry, I don't care enough to remember his name, but his character's name, Fracker from Death Wish 3, the main fucking villain with the fucking reverse mohawk. Chuck from Happy Days. He was Chuck in Happy yeah. Days? Wow, okay. Man. We lost him, dude. He's, well, he was 70, so. Okay, okay. That's a good long life. Yeah. And you told me that he was at Astro World. He was at Astro World. He yeah. loves Travis Scott. He <laughs> loves the Travis Scott meal. Don't Is you that, remember that? When it's the, all the rage I have seen. Now we have the Cardi B or Megan The Stallion meal at Popeyes. Oh, yeah. But it's, Travis Scott had his own McDonald's meal. Remember when, like, when you were a rock star, you tried to be cool <laughs> and not like this whore yourself out to any product. Yeah. Now it's just like. Yeah, I'll do a Popeye's meal. What the fuck is that? I uh, I hate fucking young people. You're not you're not cool. You kids aren't cool. You're all this consumerist capitalist pigs. One of my favorite people, Paul from Turkey Shoot, would hate you. He really would. He would fucking despise you. Um, one of my one of my favorite people is Bill Waterson. The guy who did uh, Calvin and Hobbes. Oh my god, Calvin and Hobbes! Don't bring that up. Because he was just he. Whereas you had your Garfields and your Snoopies and all that, where they were just like whores, they were just selling everything. Put my shit on. But everything. meanwhile, also having specials complaining about consumerism. That was the, the thing about the peanuts. You're right. You're right about that. I never considered that. But Bill never sold Calvin Hops to anything, and so yeah. I think well, it's, except for. Peeing decals on trucks. No, that's, you know, that was where that's he made not, all his money. That's where and, he and, and kneeling before a giant cross. I see that one. All that's the time. unlicensed. Um, I don't know about that. It, it's true. The other thing I got to talk about here, since we're done talking about peeing on crosses, because we got to stay. We got. We can't go too far into the sa- even though I said we're good Satanists now last week. Well, I'll edit that out. Um, I was bored yesterday, and you know what they say. Boredom is the devil's tool. Idle, idle hands is the devil's plaything. Well, my hands ended up finding on onto some crazy fucking documentary. What oh my porn God. were you watching? Almost had a fucking spill already. At least it's a small drink. What porn? It's kind of pornish. Uh, I found out about a documentary about mechophiles. Take a stab at that. Mechophile. Me- they fuck robots? Close. How they fuck in while making robots? Automo- automotive vehicles. They fuck cars. Mufflers. What do you fuck? What, what body part would would you call the muffler? I'm just saying, there's a hole there. I'm just yes. saying this, this has to be a man thing because women aren't into this creepy shit. Okay, so you're, men you're, will fuck anything. You're onto it. I'm trying to yeah. lead you to this here. But what body part would you equivalent 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 Going to say that words. nine more times <laughs> equivalent to the muffler. What would you consider that to be? <laughs> well, well, you know, when I think the word muffler, you know what I think. <laughs> but it's an inside joke with me and Griff. Uh, I would. I, is it supposed to be the ass? It's the ass. So it's the anus. Is it a gay thing, or is it, I guess I get? Well, I guess straight guys. Well, fuck here's ass the too. funny thing. This doc- how wait, how is what are the genders of cars? This is the interesting thing. This was such a fucking eye-opening experience for me because they only Trucks have... Trucks got to be male, right? They, they follow just like a couple people. It's literally like two people. I'm assuming we drive bitch cars. Like yeah, sure. Because we just drive well, cars. Both the c- cases, the people were obsessed with like vintage Volkswagens. The guy drove one around and they're masculine, but then they refer to them uh, as feminine as well. So they're, they're all over the place. But the one guy was living, he works two days a week as a milk stocker at Walmart. He lives in, like, rural Missouri or whatever. So he's got a roommate, and he's like, I'm finally going to tell my roommate about my mechophilia. Do you turn the car on while you fuck it, or is it off? That's a good question. I don't know. But I think you got to turn it on so... Wouldn't that burn your dick? Exactly. Like, I think they do turn it on for a minute to get the tailpipe warmed up for their dicking. Very... I'm glad I didn't have to hear all the details, but I, there was too many details. So this guy tells his his roommate, he's like, "I'm into fucking cars, but I'm not gay." Like, 
Yeah, that's a it was cool just very interesting for him to be like, I fuck cars, um, but I'm not gay. I'm not interested. So in I women. guess you gotta have the perfect size dick, or you're not gonna feel anything. Fucking, a or muffler. you put on a muffler that fits your dick. How about you put a flashlight inside the thing? That's, that's not too good. icky. That's that's because it looks like a vagina. Yeah, they're oh not into God. women. They're into cars. But this guy, the main character they were following around, following around. Not a character. He's a person. He's a human excuse being. Excuse me. He's a person. He's not a gimmick at all. He, uh, he was like, you know, I was looking for. This is the guy who writes songs for his car and performed one on the documentary. It was wonderful. It was a great song. He's a true Maybe artist. we should have reviewed this instead of Turkey Show. We might have to do uh-huh. this as a tippy tap if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so so he has sung a song. No, that's a, that's a, no, no, that's a Golden Glows After Dark episode. There, there we ever go. was one. That, that's a good point. That's an After Dark oh episode. God. We might have to have a guest on that one. <laughs> Somebody help li- carry the weight <laughs> Wait, of that. Believe me, I know a lot of sex creeps. So, we'll so, right. so. He has written a song for his car. He's talking about how the a- the muffler is the anus of a car and how you have to lube it up real what nice. What is the vagina of the car? That's a good point. I guess it's the gas tank. Because mm, there, there was some shit happening it with the gas tank. It does smell a little. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the roommate asked yeah. his buddy, he was like, how do you even do that? He's like, I get in the crevices and everything. So like interior crevices, I guess. <laughs> Just rubbing dick in there. Uh Main guy, he was just like kissing How the car. How do you stumble lot. upon this fucking thing? It's just, I don't even know. I thought it was going to be something like those Japanese robot things. The Japanese, all of those weird sex fetishes. Right, right. It's, 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 it's car people. Mechophile? It's just, mechophile. I think that's how they refer to themselves. Okay. Oh, man. So I, I was trying to say, and I'll leave it at this because we could probably talk about this for <laughs> four hours. I have plenty of questions. I know, I know. Oh. So if you have one more question after this, but there's a moment where this guy, the main guy they were following, he gets so headstrong. They're, like, taking him to a big swap meet with cars and everything, classic cars. This guy, okay, I got to do these two things. He looked up other people who are mechophiles on the Internet. Of course, he found them because of, of the course. age. That's, that why, that's why I said Internet's killing the world <laughs> because they can find each other He now. turns to the camera and says, I'm the number four mechophile in the world. Ooh, the rankings. There's rankings somehow. But this guy not for snu- much longer. Asshole. This guy snuck into a fucking hangar and fucked Airwolf. On camera, he Airwolf, said, the helicopter. Airwolf the helicopter. Wow, that's a great tease because we're going to be doing an Airwolf tippy tap in a few weeks. He fucked Airwolf, and he's number four in the world. What does that mean? Someone he's number in the- one in the world now. He fucked Airwolf. But wait, 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 no, wait, wait. no, no, no. Wait, wait. This happened. This is happened prior to rankings. Airwolf, <laughs> the, the rankings. It was a helicopter. <laughs> yeah. So isn't that kind of like? It's like it's bestiality all, in a way, kind of, like in the world of that. Like. It's kind of about engines. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got to stop this. I, th- I would think he's, he'd want to fuck Kit. That would be ultimate fuck. Oh, Kit. Yes, yeah, someone has. He has He has posters of Kit in his house and everything. Because, of course, he does. Yeah, because can, he can actually, Kit can respond to your fucking. Right. Yeah. Oh, my God. What was the other? He got so headstrong that they he the documentary crew that was following him and everything to, to, to the swap meet and all that, they were filming him. And in the morning, he would go out and he would fuck their cars. And so they were like, <laughs> yeah, he woke up. He didn't think we were watching him, but we, we have this footage. And... Then they do like this one sh- scenic shot, and they come back to their car, and there's just fucking jizz near the tire. I think we have to fucking cover this because I have so many questions. That's the thing. So he pulls out. He doesn't come inside your car. Well, he doesn't want to get pregnant, I guess. You know. <laughs> okay. Okay. We got go, one more question. Do you have one more question? No. no okay. No. We got to get We're into saving. We're saving. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What is so interesting about this movie? Let's try to think about anything other than car fucking now. What's really interesting about Turkey Shoot is it is the perfect Rorschach test for our modern days. Because right. me and you probably see something similar when we watch this movie. Just crazy people. I mean, I think anybody could see this. I think QAnon people could see this and see Deep State. They could see JFK in the background here. JFK, JFK Jr. Jr. Yeah. Excuse me. Actually, they think JFK is alive too. And he's a conservative apparently now <laughs> yeah. as well. Why not? Why not? But you can see Deep State. You can see Twitter jail in here. These people said a funny joke, 
about transphobes or about tra- <laughs> uh, trans people, and they got uh, put into Twitter jail. Right. So you know, it could be that. Uh, is it a commentary on capitalism or communism? What is this? That's movie? the beauty of art, Griff. You can you can put whatever you want onto it. Yeah, it's not black and white. It's like it could be both. Right, either or. Which, based on some of the reviews I've heard on uh, Dune, you can't do that. It's one way. And you, if you don't view it the one way, you're wrong. I, fu- I just... Come on, people. I get it. You got a strong opinion on things, but it's fucking <laughs> art. Like, take what you will. That's why I love Lynch's movies, where you're just... You can't fucking figure them out. No, and that's the point. You can't. I love it. But you can figure out Turkey Shoot. And we're going to get ready to hit this uh, trailer for it. Everybody... Week from now, you're gonna be eating turkey. Before that, you need to shoot the turkey. So here's a little bit of turkey shoot, or it was as originally called, it's uncensored title, turkey shit. Is that real? <laughs> <laughs> it is 1995. Open season. Hunting is the national sport, and people. <laughs> On the prey. The world is ruled by a strict regime. They're going to make obedient little citizens out of us. Who are? Society. What do you mean? Let Step me out of line, and they take you to the funny farm. You could die laughing. All you have to do is lead my guests on a chase for one day. A little sport. You're going to kill us? Not necessarily. You might survive. Is everybody ready? Come on, you big piece of shit. You come to me. <laughs> I'm the one you can't break. I'm what you've been afraid of all your life. I'm afraid of nothing. You're afraid of failing. <gasps> and now, my little flower. Yes, I'm going to taste your honey. But it's less the size of one's gun that counts. Or the skill with which it's used. Ah! Don't you kill him, Jennifer! He's my target! There's his thatcher. The hunt is over. Shoot on sight, shoot to kill. Thunder Shocker of the Year. All right. And from what you've told me, this movie actually used to be 15 minutes longer, but because of budget restrictions. No, 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 no. What it was was this movie was, 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 was not was. Uh, <clears throat> it was going to have a whole world building thing at the beginning. It was budgeted at like three million or something. And they, three million? They got two. Well, these are didgeridoos as well. And they. They their budget was like cut in half, like right before filming, and most of it obviously went into f- making the compounds. Oh, okay. Yeah, so <clears throat> they had fifteen pages that just literally got ripped out of the script, and that's why a lot of the actors who were involved were like, "I signed up for like this like, social commentary." You know, there was they, they were trying to say something. It originally, wasn't supposed to be some this splattered exploitation film. Okay. It was going to be like, man, this is this is like we were just talking about. Like, is this about the deep state? Is this about? Well, obviously, nobody thought of the deep state back then. Or did they? <clears throat> it was that deep. Exactly. The roots it go was deeper than an acid pit. Deeper. Oh. So like, so like Steve Rails back, who was the biggest star. Uh, of course, we love him from Life Force. His biggest claim to fame is playing Charles Manson in the TV movie Helter Skelter in the seventies. 
We got Olivia Hussey, who was in uh, Black Christmas. That's you ever seen Black Christmas? I don't think so. That's a good movie. It's, it's like a seventy slasher movie. Ooh, I just watched a seventy slasher movie last. Or it wasn't so much. Sla- it was more. Anyways, so there was some people with like some some name recognition in eighty one. Nobody knows who the fuck these people are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had some Aussie yeah, because this is an, this was part of the exploitation boom of the like like with Russia did with Mad Max, you know. So they were making shit ton of movies. And a lot of the uh, this movie got reamed by the Australian uh, movie reviewers because really? they just wanted to make high, you know, highfalutin movies. And they're like, we don't want to be, you know, painted with this brush of this shit. Yeah. You know, and these guys are like, we're just trying to make some fun, you know, make some fucking movies. You know, I was um, at the Atlantic published an article uh, on, like, Monday or Tuesday, so I'm pri- surprised I can even remember it where we're at. Saturday? Yeah, yeah. I've remembered this for five days now. And it was a, it was an argument against uh, modern action movies because they were talking well, about, they're like... boring? Yes, they were talking about The Rock's new movie, and they're like, it's, it's the same fucking movie. And then I forget who else is in it. I think Ryan Reynolds is in it, and he's like, Ryan Reynolds is not playing a, a real character. He's playing Deadpool again. Yeah, well, that's all Ryan Reynolds can do. That's that's Ryan Reynolds. It's, yeah. He's not playing Deadpool. He's playing Ryan Reynolds. So, so they're like, it's the most obnoxious movie because no one has a single, like, you, you know, everyone gets out of a jam, no problem. Like, there's no tension. There's nothing. He's like, do you remember when we had this beautiful artist age of action movies in the 80s and 90s? Well, we and I'm do, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, right We're here. We're representing it every week for the past four years. So not only do we influence Jeopardy, we also influence the Atlantic article. But apparently, well, I know many people at the Atlantic listen to this. I, I know. Apparently, they're going to Wembley Stadium because their numbers don't show up. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so anyways, we get the only glimpse we get into the world building here now is we're in a paddy wagon, a uh, little police truck. And we just have three passed out people, and we zoom in on this one lady, and we go back, and she's in like a diamond shop, crystal shop or something? <laughs> it was a new age shop. It was a new age shop. Yeah, it's, it's Chris, played by Olivia Hussey, and she's just a normal person trying to live her life. And then, well, first, before all this happens, we get a scene of this turmoil, all these like stock footage of like riots and okay. shit, you know, and, and, and all of it's like looks like it's from Asia for some reason. <laughs> I guess that was the cheapest stock footage they could get. And then we get into the, yeah, because they, they had to, like, cut the first, you know, 15 pages were just thrown in the trash because they're like, we can't afford to fucking do this, you know? Right. So, yeah, so we see Chris, and she's just running her new age shop, and this guy stumbles in. He's got, like, I think he's got, like, a bullet hole in his back and shit, and he's all beat up. And these goons come in and grab him. She's like, what's going on? Why are you doing that, that Please, person? you must leave him alone. And they won't leave him alone. They're just like, oh, you're sympathetic to this fucking trouble causer. Well, no, he just came in here and he's hurting and you're beating him. You're kicking. You're literally kicking a man when he's down. And he's like, I think you're a collaborator. Oh, we're taking you to the re-education thing. She's like, what? what? I, I'm just trying to. I'm fucking... an innocent bystander here. I'm Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, my God. Why did you? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, let's, we, we hope he gets raped in jail anyway. So he's not going to go. To jail. No, he's not going to go to jail. And I already shot white people. It's like, is that why he's not going to go to jail? Uh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. He needs. He needs. He, I don't know. I, when I saw him crying on this, the stand, I just, <laughs> wanted, I just wanted to kick him in his fucking Dude, face. Dude, he's the fucking like. I get, well, shit. If I was him, I'd be terrified too. If he goes to jail, he's getting raped and beaten every day for the rest of his life. Yeah, that, that dude. He's he's gonna be like. Midnight thud in a week after prison. <laughs> he's gonna have his teeth knocked out. He's gonna be addicted to crack. He's gonna be living in like a cavern of fog. Oh, but he's not because they they have focused the trial down to: is there any plausible deniability that he was doing this in defense of himself? I All I so gotta he, say is, he's people, just stay at home. There's a riot happening. Stay at home. So much like Kyle Rittenhouse, Chris gets involved when she shouldn't. She should have just said, hey, take that guy away. Yeah. But she showed compassion. She should have stayed behind the counter and played with this, the fucking remember, Griff, This is 1995. Far off in the future. This is 95? Yes. We, we've done other movies of the distant future of 1990. I think Cyborg was 1995, <laughs> and it looked the same as this. <laughs> it all makes sense. Okay. Right. So she gets taken off. And then you know we're back in the paddy wagon, and then we see Paul, our man, Steve Rails back. So, so they're everybody's knocked out. The three characters we're introducing here—they're yeah. knocked out in the back of the van. We're zooming in now on Paul's face, and he's like got a pirate broadcast going on. Yeah. You gotta fight the power, man! 
fucking lizard people. He's just doing all the shit. You he went full Matt Pike? <laughs> yeah, he went full. He was wearing no shirt, and he had lots of bad tattoos. <laughs> He's just like... Vape pen. <laughs> sucking it down. <laughs> Hawking loogies everywhere. <laughs> And he's just like, yeah, man, this is, you don't know what's going on, man. The deep states after. See, this is where it comes into, like. Trump won, you ex- know. And exactly. Like, it sounds like Steve Bannon. It sounds like Alex Jones. <laughs> they want, they're going to make obedient citizens out of us. They're going to put us in Twitter jail. You could bend this any way you want, which is why I kind of love it. It's completely. They're going to cancel us. And just says cancel us. The cops bust in. Yep. And like, we're on to you, and you are going to get canceled, buddy. And he's That's like fighting right. for the, As they're dragging him out, he's still got that mic. He's like, fight the power. Oh. And then they pull back out. And then we see this blonde. And she doesn't even get a flashback. She just wakes up and goes, they put me in here because they said I was a whore. I am not well, a whore. She did have a flashback. It got cut out. She, she's actually just sucking a dick. That was all it was. So <laughs> she attacked. Oh, I mean, but. It could have been her husband, so I'm not going to say she's a whore right away. Just because she's sucking one dick, even if it's not her husband, doesn't make her a whore. If she's if she's getting paid for it, that make that makes her exactly what a whore. Is. Does that wait? I I'm not I, making judgments about it. I'm just saying that's what the word means. Is it? Yes, a I whore am, gets paid. A slut fucks for for because she's just fucked up, I guess. And a, a, a whore fucks for money. But you really? know, yeah. That's what a whore is. I've never looked up the definition of these because well, I just don't know. care. Now you know, this is how you learn. Oh, wow, what a better man you are. And that's right. So, well, you would never be in a re-education camp. <laughs> so, they're <laughs> deviants is what they're called. <laughs> and we roll up. We're at camp now. And he's like, they knocked us out because they don't want us to know where we're at, man. Deep state. Deep state. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Q is the way. I did notice when he took his shirt off that he does have a giant Q with an American flat. I, well, of course he does. He's the only American. Of course he would be here. Actually, Australia's got their own Q and on movement as well. Good for them. Good for them. <laughs> That's right. So and they're wearing uh, it's better than those unflattering jumpsuits they hit everybody. Yellow wearing. with Velcro. Yeah, no, banana. Th- these aren't banana people. All right, they're real people. So they get drug out. We this is where we meet our first sleazy uh, guard, Red. We've got we're seeing like the whole encampment here, and there's just like garden houses and weird like little pop up structures. Then there's like mm. a plantation house that you you just got to figure that's where the master lives, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, outside, we just see a bunch of people. There's just dirt fields, and they're just raking dirt yeah, fields. Is, is it a Zen well, garden? Well, I think they – don't they even point that out? It's like they're tr- trying to fuck with your head, so they're making you do wacky shit. Mm-hmm. So that's the whole point. They're trying to break you yes. and then re-educate you. Right. They're trying to soften up your, go- your So that's Google why, gets. yeah, like you said, they're raking dirt. Like, yeah. like It's like a Zen garden or some shit. I believe they even call them mud rakers, yep. which I think has – muck rakers? Has muck an, rakers. What is that supposed to mean? It's uh, somebody. It's like a political thing where you like f- look for dirt on people to, okay. like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. It makes sense. So Chris, Paul, and Rita are let out of the uh, truck. They meet meet Red. We got a sly guy who slips under the truck. Never comes yeah. into play, but it happens. Yeah. Well, later on he does. Oh, it does. Yeah. I didn't even notice. So yeah. So like yeah. Some oh, young kid. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. I remember some young now. kids. He hides underneath. He's Indiana Jones style. He hides underneath the. the... His face is an inch from the ground. <laughs> I don't know how. And also two inches from a fucking uh, wheel. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible. So Chris, as you'd expect, somebody who's just an innocent person cries throughout the entire movie. That's all she does. Yeah. And she... apparently, that's all Olivia Hussey did. On filming this movie because she was terrified of Australia and all the fucking because everything's poisonous in Australia. Right. And of course, Aussies being pricks like we are, they just wind her up and go, oh, oh, you know, it's right. like, you know, it's like a garter snake. And like, oh, just, shit. That's a fucking, you know, <laughs> she would see like an a off colored rock. Right. Like, what is that? <laughs> oh, that's a rock lobster. It'll right. murder you. And so, yeah, so she was terrified the entire time filming. That's that's amazing. And she used it, Method in it, because apparently, and yeah, because Paul, Steve Rell's back, he was told Method, and it irritated all the actors, because they're like, just act. Yeah. We don't need the Method. But, so, yeah, so there, we meet Red, who's the, he's, a, he's another American for some reason. Here, right. I like, I like this about Red. He, uh... He's so bold with his penis that he has made his own glory hole, his own little peak, uh, peaker pecker for his dick to pop out because he's really into uh, power games. Yeah, he's like, come, my little flower. Of course, he's got always oh, really into Bukowski. 
He's yeah. really into that like uh, that, that like dirty old man poetry too. <laughs> so he's constantly hitting you with like, "You'll be my anther, and I'll be the bee, and I'll pollinate you." Well, he's constantly going. Head down, asses up. Which, He's really into that. Which so am I. But head down, you know, ass up. Yeah. That's the way I like to fuck. Yeah, that's one of Great Bukowski, way to fuck. That's yeah. one of Bukowski's poems. Isn't it everybody's way to fuck? Well, everyone's. Well, yeah, I, I, I think people <laughs> like that. Yeah, I like it. So yeah, so he's just like <laughs> he's he, got a whip as well, which totally, also plays he can in. see. Obviously, everybody can see that Chris is traumatized. Rita's holding her steady. She's a horse. And she's holding it steady. Yeah, she's Rita, probably had her ass beat by men a lot of times in her life. So she's like, whatever, I can take it. I'm a badass bitch. But Chris is a sweet, naive little girl. She doesn't know why. She doesn't belong here. She's yeah. not a deviant. Yeah. So she's crying, and he just zeroes in. I was like, that's the one I wanted to mind fuck. Yeah. So he's like, my little flower, come here. So he's fucking got his whip, and he's just like, what's up? Watch out, constantly <laughs> fucking flexing his whip. And constantly saying, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> it makes a good noise. You don't have to do the watch out. And so it's just like a guy who shoots a gun and goes pew at the same time. <laughs> We, we did a movie where a guy would always like make a noise while he was shooting the gun, and I don't remember who it was, but he would always mouth it, and they're like, stop mouthing it. We'll add the noise later. So then we go into the master's house, like you said. Hold on. So there is a moment where we get a little bit of flex outside. I believe this is... Maybe we go inside first. Let's go with you. Okay, we go inside, and this is where we meet the guy running it, uh, Charles Thatcher. Which, yes. Which was... Of course, purposely done to because Margaret Thatcher was running fucking England at the oh. time. Because another name for I forgot to mention this movie in America was called Escape Two Thousand. Another name for it was Blood Camp Thatcher. Oh, interesting. So we meet this guy. This like, is, we should probably also point out this is an MST three K episode. Apparently, oh okay. I thought it was one I've seen before. It's not, as far as I know. Maybe it was Escape Three Thousand, but either way, um, it might so. Be. We, we meet Charles Thatcher, who's running it, and we meet Secretary Mallory, who's a politician, who's overseeing it, like because he's like, I see big things for you, Thatcher. Because mm-hmm. Thatcher's got his big thing, his move is, I'm gonna invite the big wigs and have a hunt. Yeah, and I'm gonna. That's gonna be my stepping stone to bigger and better things. And we're thinking the same thing. Oh, he's seen Avenging Game, or uh, right. uh, well, Avenging he's seen Force. he's seen a million movies. Cause we've done at least five movies where people are being hunted. Right, right. And so the interesting thing about like Secretary is it Secretary Mallory? Mallory? Yeah, Mallory. He uh, like a lot of the uh, a couple different of the authority figures. They wear black with the white underneath it with the collar, yeah, almost they, like they're, a priest. They're all wearing Nehru jackets. So, Nehru. Okay, yeah. that's what that's called. Yeah. So and, it kind of gives this image of that, like it a has priest. an authoritarian kind of yeah, vibe on it, like religious. Like our word is the word of God kind of right. feel to it. So it's very interesting. And while they're talking, they're playing a giant game of tiki chess. Holy fuck! These tiki <laughs> figures are literally like. Four inch by uh, four inch, and then like twelve inches tall. They're huge hand carved pieces. Right. What would have been a cooler idea? I think if they were playing human chess, like they had the deviants out there. One hundred and ten percent. So when we do our movie, that's what we're gonna do. When we hunt somebody, we're gonna do. Holy that. shit! And we're actually gonna have them kill yeah. each other. Yeah. Like when when two pawns meet, it's gonna like you're gonna fight to the death now, <laughs> right. or we're gonna kill both of you. Okay. Wow. This is great. Is it? Right, and the, the higher up you are, like, that if, if you're like a queen or a king, you get a weapon because you you're more powerful, like in the chess yeah. game. Holy fuck. Everybody, <laughs> if you see this on Squid Games, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, season two Squid Games, yeah. if they have that. We came up with it We can Actually, I played a... Th- We're huge in Korea, too, by the way. Well, of course. They love us. They absolutely do. So they're talking about the program, and, you know, it's just like... It, it's a wink, because you're like, wait, what's this program that they're talking about? And then... Uh, Mallory's going on about how all the other camps are overcrowded. But for some reason, Thatcher, yours are always just... They're the, they're the Goldilocks. It's just the right amount right, of deviants. because they're... Uh, I mean, we've already kind of spoiled it by talking about how we're going to do this on an island. Right. They're, they're on an island, which right. is a spoiler, in... So they have to, like, maintain their own food supply and everything. So you have to have the right amount of people. I mean, you could just let the prisoners starve because who the fuck cares? Right. You could say it's part of the re-education or something. Right. It's too much gluten. that's affecting their brain. They're going to pop over to the camera system because all this camp is on uh, CCTV. So they're looking over, and they're just like, I mean, look at all of this. Look at everybody. Who would you want out of everybody in this camp? And we're like, what do you mean? Oh, is this a fucking – it's a fucking Right, right. yeah, we can totally see – 
Mallory doesn't care what hunt. Well, he's hunting for something, but it, it's like he's a sex creep. Yeah, yeah. We don't even know what's about hunting yet. Yeah. He, so, so we're he, just thinking it's a. Well, we know Red's into the fucking. He's got the whip. He's got the dick out. You know, right. he's just swinging his dick around. Well, pop, pop, his dick. <laughs> and so yeah, we just we just know we can just tell he's just perfectly cast. This fat, greasy guy. He's just yeah, like, he's his like, teeth are gapped out to motherfucker. <laughs> it's like what? It's just that level of evil where it just happens to you. And, like, yeah, so we cut back to, like, because he's like, ooh, I like, she's very vulnerable. And he's, like, pawing the screen, and it's Chris on the <laughs> right. screen. And we cut back to Red, and Red, like you say, he's whipping his dick, swinging it, and he's doing windmilling in her face. Yeah. And fucking Paul is, like, loving it. He's like, he goes to read, like, watch this shit. And he's like, he has his arms crossed, he's just smiling. He's like, right. And it, it's not until it goes too far, because Red actually takes Chris <laughs> by the head and forces her down. Right. And Paul is still just like, eh, Rita, Rita. <laughs> and because this isn't his first rodeo, Paul's been in a bunch of these camps and escaped. Right. And apparently Paul is making some some noises or something, and it disturbs another character, Ritter, who bops him <laughs> on the head, and then we get the look of him just standing over him, looking menacing as right. all hell. Ritter, if you, first of all, if, you, if you've ever seen Mad Max, you recognize Ritter. He's fucking Fifi, uh, yeah. Mad Max's captain. Yes! I was like, I know this motherfucker. That's what it right. is. He also looks identical to uh, the one villain in Indiana Jones, the giant yes, dude. Yes, he does. Bald, handlebar mustache. And he, he looks like an old-timey circus strongman. Exactly. He's like tall, bald, with giant handlebar mustache. And these guys, they do such a good job of playing him to be taller, too, because right. they're always shooting him <laughs> at a low angle. So it's like he just looks fucking enormous. He's fuck, great. He's always great in this movie. He is 100% <laughs> great. So, yeah, he and then an alarm goes off, saved by the bell, because he's ready for to rape fucking Chris right in front of everybody. Ah, deviants meet in the center of the compound. So all the... At, this compound, actually, when they had a budget, was built for 500 people. They could only afford it 70 people, for 70 extras. So we see a lot of... Uh, Angle tricks where we just oh. put people there and then we change the angle and put them there. Yeah, yeah. So, but it I, works. It looks like a lot I, of people. Peter are here. Jackson used the same tricks to make uh, Lord of the Rings people <laughs> right. look small. Well, he's another tall. Aussie. Yeah, exactly. They know how to do this. Is he Aussie? Well, he's in New, he's in New Zealand. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That's offensive to them, by the oh, way. Okay. Well, hey, we're, we're not big in New Zealand, even yeah. though we got stickers. Our stickers are all over. Deviant New Zealand. camp for Murray, <laughs> or excuse me, maybe it's the deplorable camp. Oh, could be. And so. Charles comes out. He's going to show, like, he's going to flex in front of Mallory and show who I got some power. Right. He's got to do the thing where he's sizing up all of his new prisoners and everything. And he, he's, he's, ah, oh, he's got the gray. He's got the great gray hair with the thick black eyebrows. Yeah, he, looks like, he looks like Phil Donahue or John yeah, DeLorean. Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. And so he's, like, fingering through all of his new prisoners and everything. And then he notices Paul. And he's got the whole fucking rap sheet on him. Right. He's like, oh, yes, prisoner 4422, you escaped from prison 817, you uh, you ate the meatloaf and you shat yourself <laughs> and people thought you had some kind of contagion and they threw you out. He's got the whole thing. Right, but I assure you, Paul, you won't escape from my prison. And Paul just smirks at him. He's just like, I'm going to be out of here by the end of the day. Right. And for whatever reason, Ritter just pulls somebody out. I I didn't hear well, this. I, no, I, I think uh, Charles did it. Like he was, it's kind of almost like this is going to happen to you, Paul. Like you know, so they they, oh, they, they were they, setting an example. Yeah, so they get the weakest person, a woman who's barely five feet tall. Yes, she was very small, very faint. Ritter like just yanks her, he grabs her by the fucking jumpsuit, rips her out of line. Quotamodo! <laughs> Quotamodo! <laughs> and so she nervously starts saying, ah, we will work until our hands turn to bone. Well, she's like, we I, will... I am a deviant. I am the lowest form of life. It's, like, it's almost like, I thought we were in Young uh, Warriors again. It was almost like a hazing, fraternity hazing thing. I was waiting for her to pick up cherries with her butt cheeks. Right. But while she's doing it, Ritter... Shadow boxing. He's, in front start, of her. he's doing like like a big brother, little brother thing where he's like punching at her, just barely yeah, missing. It's like her. he's shadow boxing inches away from her face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this and guy's he's doing twice the, her size. Yes, and they again they're they're doing such a fucking awesome <laughs> shot of this where they're doing it real low, so or just like at a perfect height, so you can see how he's towering over her. And he's just shoo, 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 shoo. And of course, that fucks with her concentration. Yes. So she stumbles on a word. She pulls a griff and it stumbles all over these words. Right, of course, because she's trying to say a <laughs> or something. So then about Ritter that. just 
Starts bitch slapping the shit out of her. He's just Holy like backhanding fuck. her left and right. Blood spraying out of her fucking nose. And so she, you just get a close up of her bloody face and everything. And she, freedom is obedience. <laughs> obedience is work. Work is life. And then, no, that ain't even it. She falls down, and then Ritter starts kicking the shit out of her. He just starts <laughs> kicking her. And he's loving oh. every second of it. And class dismissed, scene over. <laughs> We're just yeah. in a cage now with Paul, and he's just, he's got his hands, like, tied up or something. No, no, no. no. What it is is it's like a counterweight thing. He's in a cage. Well, yeah. But it seemed like he was like... No, he's holding old. it off. He's holding because Because there's... a lot of people get confused by this because what it is is, okay, there's a counterweight. So what they're doing he's is... He's in torch, a shark cage. What yeah, it's, and yeah, it's very the, narrow. It's but, like you can just barely fit in yeah, it. Yeah, it's a shark cage that it barely fits in, and then there's a collapsible roof that he has to keep up because it's a counterweight. Well, yeah, yeah there's a weight on there, and then there's a counterweight. But people think, like, what, what people are doing in the movie is taking weight off the counterweight, not putting it on. Yeah. So when you take it off, it makes, obviously, the weight above him heavier. Right. So, yeah. So, and he's just smiling. It's like, you're not going to break me. Yeah. And even uh, even um, uh, Thatcher comes over at one moment, and he's like, are you a big fan of Dolomite? I'm going to put the weight on it. <laughs> he fucked up the line. Yeah, because you're supposed to take the weight off. Yeah. Put he, does, the- he does put some weight on it so, like, so he can talk to him. Right. He, and then well, the, the, they, this is where the actor who played Thatcher mentioned this. Because uh, uh, Paul was going full method. He's like, no, I want real fucking weights. Wow, okay. And like, and Thatcher's like, yeah, and he fucked up his fucking scene because he's fucking got 100 pounds he's holding up, and he can't fucking do his lines. So we're like, what the fuck are you doing, Steve? So while that's going on, he's just, he's just I'm, you can't break me. You can't break me. Right, and that's, that's uh, his whole thing. Is, is his name Ritter? Why did I write Ritter? Who's Ritter? Oh, Ritter's the bald guy. <laughs> yeah. God, I'm already fucking up. So we cut to where, where, what's Reed and Chris up. We got to see more of the work that these people have yeah. to do. Again, we're, we talked a minute about how they keep these people alive, and apparently it's a uh, fish. Right. So, or, or they're just fucking with people. They're doing mind games. So they're just making these people gut fish. Yeah. So, uh, and apparently the uh, Rita, the woman who played Rita, first of all, despises this movie, hates the fact that she was in it, mm-hmm. but... She was a hardcore uh, animal rights person. She's like, mm. I'm not going to do this. Even though they were dead already. She's like, I'm not doing this. So they had to make, they were like, oh my gosh, she's such a pain in the ass. They had to make fake fucking fish for her to take apart. Oh, wow, really? But this is where we meet Dodge. Why? They just could have not had her in this Yes, scene. exactly what they, uh, they or they could have just had, much like later, we're not, we're not going to get into it right now, but a hand double. They could have just had a hand double of like somebody break, and then showing her from the head neck up. That's all they had to do. I, I mean, I eat fish, but I don't want to fucking gut a fish. Yeah. I, I, I'm grossed out by interiors of anything, though. Except for cars. Well, yeah, I'm really in the <laughs> fucking mill. I, I then really questioning anyway, this. This is where we meet Dodge. Dodge is a lifer. He's been here forever. <laughs> I got. You're not going to get this reference, but I got a real Rick from the Young Ones vibe off this dude. With some Coke bottle glasses and a bad Johnny Rotten like fucking orange dye job. <laughs> it's so funny because he is like everybody is like very okay Aussie, and then this guy is like the over the top. We're trying to really like uh, the Nolan brothers would cast this guy to be an eccentric Aussie character yeah, well, because they always do like over the top, very eccentric of the uh, 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 you know area they're trying to represent like fargo and everything like pe- nobody talks like that but they really exaggerate you call them the nolan brothers oh i did <laughs> yeah, what's their the name cohen brothers. cohen brothers yeah, i was like what are you talking about christopher nolan has a brother that i don't know about yeah so yeah see he's enjoying he's like eating the guts he's just like hey this is great man yeah he's slurping them up he's like hey it's like caviar it's not like caviar and then we meet the most misnamed character in the movie because this no! guy's because this guy's a no. badass. No, oh. but but for some reason they call him Griff. No, <laughs> come on, don't do me wrong. This is an alternative universe where I am a Chippendale dancer, but I was too fucking sexy because th- this Griff, again, alternative Griff. He's pretty much me, but <laughs> it's in a world where I'm over six feet tall. Because this guy is like six foot eight. He's a fucking skyscraper. He's jacked. He's beautiful. Still got thin hair. He's jacked, but he's- he is beautiful. And he he's just he completely exudes my authority. <laughs> yeah. It's perfect. Well, he's a malcontent. He can tell he's always stirring up trouble. Thatcher hates this guy. Yeah. 
and he's got a plan. He's always got a plan. He's always working a way to get the fuck out of this camp. So he creates a distraction. He, th- he like, gets up and throws a guy. Yes. I think it was Dodge. And then while the guard's looking at Dodge, he grabs one of the knives they're using to gut it. And this- I like what you, you save yourself from doing. You were going to do an Australian. You were going to do knife. <laughs> I see what you, you yeah. saved yourself. It was very I don't, good. We can't, we can't do those cheap jokes. No, on. we can't. I don't have my Velcro shoes on. So I'm glad that you saved yourself from doing yeah, just, that. He just grabs a knife. Yeah, it just grabs and it's a, a knife. perfectly <laughs> adequate knife. <laughs> and it was a very <laughs> adequate knife. And he sl- slides it right into his sleeve and then walks off and, whizzles, <laughs> and just walks away. So Paul is still just taking on all that weight. Charles is over there. Charles Thatcher. Yeah. He's still just trying to get answers. He's trying to break me. And he's just like, you're afraid. I'm not afraid of anything. You're afraid that you're not going to be able to break me. You're afraid of failing. Ooh. I won't play your games, Thatcher. And then fucking Charles goes, oh, really? So he takes some fucking weights off. off. Yeah, I got it wrong there. And then he's like, I'll break you. Yeah. So we're watching this man just sweat the fuck up, Paul. He's all just right. sweating all over the place. Hot Australian island sun with all this weight, just hours of holding up weight. It's going to make you sweat. So Murray... Time for a shower. Right. Let's talk showers. Because we always <laughs> talk about showers, open bathrooms. This is a gender neutral bathroom, by the way. Yes. So that's very progressive of this bathroom. So you Well, they have a very it's weird how like they're really oppressive, yet when it comes to like sex, they're very uh, progressive. Are they? Well, they're, the whole thing is like you can do whatever the fuck you want. No, you can. Yes, you can, as long as nobody gets pregnant. And and what? There is one very big rule, too. What is it? No gay fucking. I don't remember hearing that. There was no homosexual activity. Okay. Well, okay. So it's on one but, hand, you're like, is this super progressive or is it not? Because they give and take. It's, they are Well, blending. I think they, they understand, like, these people are going to kill us, maybe. So we got to give them something. We got to throw them a bone. Right. Because or- even... And so, <laughs> so I thought you said you didn't have the Velcro <laughs> shoes on. So, so they're like, "Look," and we're hearing it from Thatcher. It's like it plays every fucking time the shower time goes. Because I guess they think people forget this. They're like, "Look, deviants are allowed to fuck." Yes, but if anybody gets pregnant just once, you better you better use the fucking uh, pull out method because if you're if you get a girl pregnant. We're going to castrate you. Yes. We're going to abort the baby. Girl gets, girl gets pregnant, abort baby, and sterilization. Yes. So, so again, you're, you're pro-abortion, so you're progressive. Yes. You're pro-sex. <laughs> you're progressive. But then they throw in the homosexual thing. So well, it's like, we, wait. This is 95, Griff. We didn't get that far. Remember? That's a good point. Don't ask, don't tell. That's a good point, because the Clintons were, were gay haters back right. in, the, in the mid-90s. So that's true. So we're getting a lot. Of, we're getting equal opportunity nudity too. There was there's, there was death threats in there too, and I forget what it was for. I think I it was know. for anal. Okay, <laughs> I don't so. remember. There was death threats in there somewhere. So we get a nice shot. We're seeing dicks flopping around, tits playing, and everywhere. Maybe it was for transmittable diseases. We get a nice shot of Rita's flat ass, and then she wraps the towel around. She goes. Chris still hasn't showered. She's just like, no, I'm traumatized. Fucking Dodge is sitting there with his fucking balls hanging out, just like talking about this plan he has to like well, is it break. Ozzy again. Yeah. Aussies are into that. They're like old dudes in uh, in like uh, 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 communal gyms. They just love sticking their dick out. We okay. I'm sorry. We got to talk. I wanted to talk about the shower <laughs> because there's like three shower heads spread around the bathroom, and then it's a it's a rectangle or a, a square room, and then one corner there is like the sinks. One uh, one side of the wall, there's toilets with no walls, just open shitters. Well, why would there be? You're showering together. Why not shit together? So, do, you, do you need privacy to take a shit? Yes. <laughs> yeah. We've done so much humor about, did so much potty humor on that, where it's like everybody needs privacy when they're shitting. That's the American way. You got to be private. Well, I, I guess if I'm showering with people, I can handle shitting around. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can, it's not like they have a shitting time. You can just shit whenever you got to shit. You got to pop in there, take just a shit. Just wait till no one's in there. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I, I do like the idea of it's like the super bidet. You can shit naked, walk, and just hold yourself down real quick. This scene reminded me of Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. <laughs> Star, 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 Star. <laughs> because they, had, they also had co ed showering in that movie. Yeah, gender yeah. neutrality. Yeah. I love it. 
which is also another, I guess, sometimes authoritarians love showering together because that was also another authoritarian type like uh, lifestyle. Right. It, well, it's just like our sheriff last week in, uh, in uh, what, uh, Universal Soldier where he saw the glutes and he's like, I thought I was a heterosexual male all this time. I've been thinking that I wanted to grab lady cakes, but now I'm seeing these glutes and I want to get some, I want to get some of that male cake. And he tried yeah. to double fist that cake, but he no. couldn't double fist it. Have you talked all you needed to talk about the shower situation? Or is there more? We're done with the sour okay. situation. Okay. Sour, sour situation. <laughs> sour. It was sour. Chris is a little sour because she still hasn't showered yet. She just got <laughs> done. That, well, that was the perfect segue. That's like, yeah. God damn she it. She just got done gutting fish, so she stanks. Yeah, and even Rita tells her, you yeah. smell like fish. And I'm not talking. <laughs> that's humor. That's yeah. shower humor. And we got Dodge, like, I got this plan. Like, everyone's like, shut up, Dodge. Like, you know. Well, yeah, Dodge is explaining. This is how we knew. We already told you he's a lifer. This is where he explains, I'm a lifer. I'm sorry. Uh, and he's like, I've got, I got plans. i got days. And we, or Chris, she's just like, I'm just going to do whatever they tell me to do, and I'm, they're going to let me go. Right. That's what they said. Right. She's naive. She believes she is. Shit. Yeah, she is exactly. She's the naive person. And then we see Paul get dragged in. He's just been holding up a weight all day long. So he just collapses on the floor. Yep. And now we cut back to the plantation house. Yep. We're inside. We're in. We're in like a little bar room now. We got a little situation right. here. This, I like this. This is where we're going to meet the hunters. Yes. These rich fuckers. First time going through, I was like, "What the fuck's happening right now?" I was so confused. I'm glad my notes are not that confusing. <laughs> so, well, because I fixed them. I was going to. So say. we got. We see Jennifer blindfolded. Assembling a gun. Yes. So we know this woman knows how to handle a gun. And we see a man with a very odd, like, tight and clean Romulan haircut. Ha- it was a Romulan yes. haircut, dude. Romulan. I was like, I know I've seen that. <laughs> Romulan. That's what right. it is. And he, uh, he, he's into some sick shit, too. And he's just We're like... We're to have a field day with him. He's got the vape pen, and he's just like, oh, my God, Jennifer. You did it again. It's Tito is this guy's name. Yeah. 32 seconds. Right. And she like, she's like. Progressive like, again because he's some. I mean, right. basing this only on his, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I got, not a, I got I'm the not same a, vibe off him. Yeah. I'm yeah. not assuming. But he also, yeah. he is friends with a very hairy man. <laughs> yes. He's a twink. He loves a bear. <laughs> so Jennifer, who's also, we'll learn as a sex deviant, she she is like uh, talk, explaining that the, it's a. It's a snake Pliskin gun is what it is. A handgun with a giant scope. On yeah, it. it is. And it's strap and everything. And and she's mentioning how this has uh, – it, it's not a tranquilizer dart. It's like a paralyzing dart. Yes, so which is that, just a tranquilizing dart times two. Well, tranquilizing, I think, would knock you out. This just, like, mobilizes you. You're still awake. Okay. So, because, of course, this is exposition. Because no, I, I wonder if this is going to be used later on in the movie. Yes, it is. So – uh, Mallory's walking in. He's this drink guy's drinky drink going on. He, he's going on. Cigars are everywhere. Drinks are everywhere. The importance of your, you know, your cab. He's like, he, the- yeah, he's like, Thatcher, if this hunt goes off like you say it will, you're going places, buddy. Promotion. Murray, again, they're, they're, we've given this away because, of course, it's the movie and we need to get people hooked into this. But they're still being coy with what's happening here. And I forgot what this movie was, and I'm dead serious. I forgot what this movie was supposed to be, so I was like, what the fuck is going on with these people? They're just into fucking, right? I thought it was just like a weird (laughs) fuck camp. Well, Mallory, that's all he's into. He doesn't want to really hunt anybody. Well, we know other people are into fucking, too. Yeah, but these people also want to hunt and kill people. Yeah, so I didn't understand what was going on. Even when she was assembling (laughs) the gun and talking about how it could uh, paralyze people, I was like, what's going on again? I, I just I go dumb when I'm taking my notes. I like I get yeah anyways. I know I know I know. So we they get the, the CCTV on and they're like because now it's time to pick out their because you only get this is how the hunt works. They're only allowed one person to hunt and they cannot no poaching. You cannot fucking go hunt someone else's pick right. And you only get one. I just thought it was funny that they don't gather in like a big nice theater room. They're in a closet. And they did the interior of this room. I'm sorry, my my sister's an interior decorator. I notice rooms. It was like a silver sparkled closet 
with one little screen that they, of course, recessed into the wall so it looks like, you know, futuristic. Right. Uh, but yeah, they're just watching one of the closed circuit TV, and he's got the giant remote, and he's pressing it all evil eye. <laughs> it's so good. It's so I love this shit. And we see Griff doing some gardening. That's right. Well, I'm a gar. I love my plants. This but is. But he's not really one, gardening. One to one. He's hiding that knife that he. Have stole. you ever looked in my planners? No, I haven't. Just knives. And he's burying the knife. And Dodge is watching, too. So Dodge sneaks in and swipe, gets that knife. Swipe! Swipingly. So Mallory's just like, I just want to fuck that hot chick, Chris. I don't, and he's like, that's mine. Yeah, he, he's sniffing at his fucking brandy or something. Yes, this Chris lady. Oh, uh, I think that she's still the one with the long, dark, luxurious she's hair. quite vulnerable. Have you given her the shampoo that I've sent her? I'd like him to smell nice for me. And then uh, Thatcher goes, See? how about that Griff guy? How, See? He, goes, he goes, Tito. How am I not supposed to confuse this with about fucking when Mallory is just like, I want to smell well, that, her. Because that's what Mallory wants to do. Yeah. So he's like, Tito, how about that Griff guy? He's dangerous. He's got that knife. He's like, no, I'm sticking with Dodge. He's more my type. Yeah, he, he likes the squirmy. Well, he said, I like the squirmy shit type. Right. I like them when they. I like when, when they got Coke bottle glasses. We're going to take the. You know what's really funny? I want to take his Coke bottle glasses from him. So now we were preparing for the game. Ritter. Well, is, this is a different game. Oh, that's right. This is a disciplinarian game. See, we're reading my notes as <laughs> I wrote them. Where I was still like, what the fuck is this camp? Because yeah. I thought it, again, Squid Games, I thought it was more of just playing these weird psychotic games with their prisoners. Well, this is, this is perfect Squid Games from what I hear. I've never seen Squid Games. I've never either. So I think their games are more childish. This one's a little too well, highbrow for them. <laughs> this, game was, this game was the stupidest game. <laughs> was, I was like, couldn't they come up with something better? I think the premise of Squid Games is like tic-tac-toe for life or death. Okay. So this is a little highbrow for that. This is like the deadliest game of dodgeball we've ever seen. Because we... I, we, we dodgeball no, insinuates that throwing is yeah, happening. No, okay, yeah, just go along with it. So I'll explain. <laughs> so we get everybody's drawn out. All the, uh, whatever they're doing, we have to watch this. We see the kid from earlier who, yes, who got underneath I the It finally snapped into me. He's got, like, two plastic balls yes. filled with gasoline. And small little pores for it to get, just, like, one small pore for it to leak out. And they're tied to his ankles. Yes. He's got, like, a, like three feet of rope to each thing. And then Ritter, like, drags him out. And the, so the, uh, they never explain what the game, the game is basically. I gathered the game pretty quickly. Well, the, I, don't know how the, I don't know how the guy's supposed to win. Like, what's his objective? Because uh, I think it's just you're gonna die. I mean, he tried to escape because he grabbed. He tra- the balls are pretty big. Yes, they're about the size of a do- a bigger than dodgeball. But yeah, I was gonna say they're they're bigger than they're like beach ball size. Yeah. if not bigger. And so Ritter and his boys are trying to kick them to guess. I guess get to kick the gas out of them, and they're very good at it. Right. That's what they're doing. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're rotating it so the gas leaks out of the one port that's in the ball. And I'm sure they're kicking the kid as well. So oh, he's yeah, all they're fucked up. Yeah. Ritter's doing his shadow boxing, you know. And Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's always making those noises. I love it. But, yeah, all the guards are having a good time. They're laughing their asses off. The crowd is silently watching. And Chris, being Chris, she starts crying and turns her head away. So Paul takes her and vice grips her head. <laughs> Turns it slowly. He's digging his... I, now that I know he's method, I'm like, God, this guy's a fucking creep because he's digging his nails into her skull. Watch. They want you to feel fear. I don't want you to feel fear. Go on, go, well, he's trying to... Ease it up. Stop with the Batman voice. <laughs> yeah. He's just trying to, like, open her eyes. She's like, you got this... You, you're going to survive. You got to fucking see this shit. You can't just curl up into a fertile position, as Griff would say. Yes, <laughs> and so <laughs> Stop <you> bring that <laughs> so they 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 like Thatcher's like enough, finish him. So now there's gas everywhere now. They're, what they do is they go, all right. I believe that is a touchdown. Yes, and then they fucking get well, up. Well, no, well, no. And then they had the fucking instant replay. So it took like 15 minutes. We had to. Well, yeah. But anytime there's a touchdown, you got to yeah, fucking review instant the review play. It, yeah. And they they assure us that he had full control of the balls, <laughs> right. and he got two feet in, <laughs> and he had possession when he hit the ground. Which means he has to die. That's a very scary thing. 
Because we see all the, the gas, and then Ritter and his boys all light up an edge of the gas. Did, uh, I mean, I, I noticed that one of them didn't actually have a Zippo. He had a matchbook, and he was just sitting back there trying to get it to strike. Should have got strike anywhere. And then we see the kid go up in flames. He does a nice little, like, the little cat. I, I don't think this thing. was planned. Maybe it was. It, it, there's a little bit of swastika design in the fucking things. There was. Things. Yeah. I, yeah, I wonder. I wonder. And, like, Chris is crying. Not because she's what she's seeing, because he has a vice grip on her head. He's just squeezing her yes, head. Yes. Blood like, is coming out of her. He's going full watermelon on her head. He's trying to squeeze out all the beautiful juices. And uh, as we're watching this blaze of glory, they're still in the silver closet watching on the monitor. And Tito, he's just, oh, bravo. This is fucking wonderful. Ultra violence. <laughs> so now we're back in uh, the, the, the deplorable bin where yes. we keep our prisoners. Uh, yes. And they're all dead tired. They're and not now, dead. like, fucking... <laughs> Chris is like, I have to get the blood off my head. I have to take a shower. Right. So she is like, she takes like a horse shower where she's still in her jumpsuit. Everybody's sleeping except her and Paul. Right. So Paul's gonna keep lookout for her because right. he. This is like his number one. You know, he's not into Rita because he right. even he turns his nose up to any woman who's put out more than twice. Right. So he's like this Chris girl though. She is fucking pure as the white snow. Right. J- same thing Mallory saw. Maybe Paul and Mallory have a little something in common. I don't know. She is a good look. She's an attractive woman. She is would, attractive. Yeah. That's true. So she so she's feels safe that Paul will. He's like, I got your back. Don't worry. Take your shower. That slow, long Velcro rip. <laughs> Her fucking yeah, she jumpsuit. Just, she does. She's just she's taking a hard shower. She's doing the pits and the crotch. You know, yep. she's not good. Well, that's going on. Red shows up with his goons. Yeah, and Paul sees them coming. They immediately shove a giant <laughs> bar into his mouth. Well, it's a, yeah, nightstick. Well, yeah, but it looked. Okay, and he's and he's 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 like no selling. He's like, Aah. red is telling him, look here, your little girlfriend. I'm gonna pluck her flower. I'm gonna pollinate her. I'm the little bee. I'm gonna get in that. I'm gonna buzz my little ass in there. And then when I'm done, he's gonna do her, and he's gonna do her, and he's gonna do her. We're all gonna do it. Even Ritter's there in the background, just nodding along. <laughs> no, like, Ritter's not around. He Ritter's not up. here yet. Yeah, cause okay. he shows up later. Okay, so. And then he goes in, he's like, oh, my little flower. And this is where we get <laughs> this poor lady. Olivia Ossie was like, I'm not doing, I'm not doing uh, nudity. And they're like, all right, we'll, we'll get a body double. So we get the body double of the boobs. Perfectly good pair of boobs. But everybody involved with it, because I watched some behind the scenes shit. Everyone, including Rita, was like, mm, man, Olivia Hussey should have done the nude scene. They did her no favors with this body double. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it uh, makes me wonder what uh, what's her name's body look like because this woman's body was fine. Well, Rita, she had some said going on because we see a lot of scenes of her running with her boobs just flopping all over the place and later in the movie. But yeah, so like uh, we we get the scene of perfectly gr- nice boobs. They were not horrible. No, right? not they're at not all. pepperoni nipples. None of that shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shame nipples. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don't shame the nipples. You're going to the deplorable camp, man. Of You're going to be there. I'd be the first person. I'd be Ritter, <laughs> motherfucker. What are you talking about? <laughs> so. You see, this still works in the context where I'm Chippendale Griff. <laughs> so. <laughs> So he's all like, Hello. and she's just like, <laughs> she's like, all right, like, I, yeah, yeah, she sees her fate is sealed, right? So she grabs up, grabs up on him, and then she goes down into his jumps. Well, he's got the whip too, and he's still doing <laughs> the. So she unzips his. Like, he's got like a mile long zipper on this jumpsuit. Well, it's the, he's got the same Velcro. Z- <laughs> well, no, he's got a fucking he's, metal zipper. Yeah. Well, again, he wants. He's like into the SMN thing, so he's probably got the zipper mask and everything, where the mouth and the eyes are zippers. So, so she grabs a hold of the dong. Yes. And we're like, oh my God, we're just we're feeling for Chris. Like, she's gonna fuck this gross guy. Yeah. And then she turns the tables because she pulls the dong out. I went I, I feel like there should have been a line in there, like there's a carpet match of drapes. Because he's got a big bald <laughs> spot. I wonder if like his pubes have a big bald spot down there too. We'll never know because we'll never know. she pulls his dong out of the out of the uh, the fly. He looks up in the air because he's like, oh, <laughs> He's like, he's like, this finally works. Yeah, this finally works. This, this flower shit never worked before. Ne- never works. His Bukowski poems never work. <laughs> so, and then she grabs a zipper, zip, and it's, oh, she, 
She's like, it's like fucking something about Mary. His balls are all encased in that oh zipper. My, God. my favorite Bukowski poem, the one about him zipping his balls into his zipper. <laughs> Who could forget that? Who one? could forget that one? So she goes <laughs> running out of the shower and right into Ritter's arms. Right. And then, then uh, Red comes out. She zipped my dick up. And he's like... He's like, don't you touch this woman. She's set aside for somebody special. Mm-hmm. And then he like, he max on her a little. Like he bit her. <laughs> he bit her. Yeah. I've watched this three times. Well, after the notes, you know, the notes are confusing because I watched it the first time. I was very confused by this movie. But yeah, I wa- when I watched it again, I was like, what does he do here? He bites her. He might be a vampire. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, anyways, we can't talk. But about he just that. maniacally laughs and then this, you know, takes off. So now Paul and uh, Griff are yep. like they're like it's like the next day. The, yeah, we're oh my god, we we haven't even talked about days. We're we're so confused because they didn't tell us in so no. many movies recently. They've been telling us what day. Right. Uh, this has to be day three. Yeah. This is day three, morning of day three, and what we're getting here, the whole encapsulation of the scene is just that we're we're getting a surveillance of the camp at right. this point. So Griff and uh, Paul are hanging out together, and right. this is this is the perfect representation representation of Chippendale Griff and this other loser Paul, because I'm tower I'm like easily two feet taller than him. But no, they're like growing up. They like game recognizes game because they both have escaped. Yeah. So they're like, how are we going to do it this time? Right. Like, you know, and they're like checking everything out. There's a lot of these like mounted robotic fucking machine guns everywhere yeah griff is explaining yeah he's got a lot of toys in here and they look up at one tower and there's a robotic it's got awful cyborg or not cyborg universal soldier like (laughs) camera pieces on it and guns lasers were there lasers or guns in this movie because there were no lasers but i was was shocked there weren't i was expecting (laughs) laser guns well some of the sound effects were laser-esque for me i'm glad you brought up sound effects because the music was done by brian may not of queen but of Mad Max and Road Warrior, he did the music for Mad Max and Road Warrior. Oh, interesting! And uh, it, it, you, and you can tell, especially at the end, there's a lot of very Road Warrior esque kind of done, 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 like kind of shit going on. But well, you just got to build up the. Tension. There was a, it, but it, it it was that old school synth too. Was I liked there. it? Yeah. I I didn't mind it. It yeah. wasn't a full moon production. No, it was not. Thankfully. Yeah. So they're checking things out, and now we go back to our the real deplorables, the one percent. They're going to be hunting people. Yeah, and we see they're just hanging on the veranda, having some lemonade. Yep. We see uh, Jennifer, who's got a horse there. Right. She's she's, a, just, she's the classic rich bitch. She's got the fucking like whole outfit on. You know. I I gotta say I love I love her wardrobe and her makeup was fucking cool as shit too. It was very big, futuristic. Big fan of Jennifer. And of course you would be. And she rides up, and this is where we meet one of my favorite characters in the movie. <laughs> Tito apparently got a friend. <laughs> Tito likes going to the circus. So she comes up, she gets off her horse, and she's like, she sees this guy. She's like, what she the gets f-? off her high horse? Yeah, exactly. And she's like, what the fuck is that? Doffing <laughs> his cat. Yeah, Doffing his top hat. Yes. Tito has his own pet werewolf. They ha- <laughs> Okay, you said the werewolf part. I was hoping <laughs> yeah. you were going to say that for a second. Because a, a minute earlier, when, when they were putting the gun together and everything, yeah. they're like, oh, yeah, you have your eccentricities. You're trying to use a high fluting word that he made up. Eccentricities? Yeah. That's not a word, and I know that. <laughs> right. And I'm not using that. Tito used that. So she looks over, sees that. What the fuck? Is- <laughs> Don't worry. He's eating today. Right. So apparently... <laughs> Tito found him in a circus, <laughs> and he's like, I got to have this guy. Donned him in a tuxedo <laughs> right. with a fucking pipe hat, stove well, top he, hat. He, he, no, it was a top hat. Stove. And, and, and then he, but he had like, he had uh, a tuxedo with a sleeve, uh, sleeveless tuxedo. Sleeveless tuxedo. With sleeveless gloves. Yep. And he doffs it like he's trained him well. Alf, his name is Alf. Alf, he's loving it. He's yes. just like, I've hit the jackpot. Like, he's the most, he's living the best life. After I watched this, I had to email Chris, like Anthropus Chris, and be like, <laughs> what do you know about werewolves in the circus? And he told me it's a very much a relevant thing. The question is, can you – it looks like Tito tamed him. It looks like he wouldn't – he would kill when, when you told him to, but you could keep him under control. Would, it, would that be okay with, like, Anthropus Chris? Well, again, from what he's told me, this is a black and white situation. You can't. You can never, no you Anne, cannot tame a there werewolf. There is no Anne Rice fuckable situation here. You're not going to write. Well, it's true. A, there's, there's never been 
uh, werewolf like fucking erotica written? Is that, I don't know about it. Maybe well, there is out there. Not by Anne Rice because she's wrong. I mean, we saw the werewolf three way in Howling too. Yeah, your sister's a werewolf, right? But nards everywhere. Yeah, nards flapping everywhere. <laughs> So okay, so I okay, so this is a, well, this is a movie. So I get that you know they can have a, you can have a tame werewolf in a movie, but according to like Cantor, it's Chris in real life. That's not the way it works. It's black and white. You just got to kill him. Okay. But that also might just be uh, his way of doing things. Maybe there is other ways. But you know what? We respect uh, Chris's decision to kill every werewolf he comes. And across. while they're just meeting the wolf man, we see Mallory fucking around with that Snake Plissken trank gun. And he's just like, how does this thing work? And like, we just see some some prisoners he, in the yeah, background. He looks up over to Thatcher like, is this cool? <laughs> yeah, it's cool. They're prisoners. So he just shoots the fucking prisoner in the leg. The woman collapses. She's like having an epileptic fit on I'm, her. You know, and he's whew, just like, he's just what like, was what was in that? Did you know that there's a thing going around that people are stabbing people with syringes now? I, apparently, it happened at Astro World. You think that's what they said? I'm not kidding. They said that happened. Yeah, there. they said that happened, but they were like, "This is intravenous." So somehow they're like knocking these people out, giving them drugs into the vein because you can't just fucking walk by and stick. Well, you do it in the neck. Okay. If you hit somebody with fucking a drug, you don't, whatever it is might knock you out instantly. You don't do you think out. this is a razor blade and apple situation where it's like this makes no fucking sense? It, well. No one makes no sense. Why are people putting fentanyl in coke? Why are they killing their fucking clients? Oh, I don't get yeah, that. I don't get that either. I don't know. Because it gets you super fucking high, but still, you're probably killing them because the doses are so insane for that shit. It's like you have... Ugh. So, we cut to... <laughs> Me and Murray are never going to get a Breaking Bad show. That's what I'm <laughs> learning here. Because we're both very sympathetic. <laughs> So uh, we cut to Thatcher is now going to tell Paul the rules. He's going to let him Everybody. in on the game. They're, gonna, right, they're yeah. letting all the people who got picked into the game. So we see, like, they got a computer that's making these big, clunky, chunky ID cards. It's like dog tags, but in the form of, of a COVID, uh, you got your and vaccination And it says in card. huge letters, ID. Yeah. With a picture of you on it. Yeah. And it's like metal punched in, punctured for your number. You needed to have a number too. I don't know, but anyway, this is their get out of jail free card, literally. Yeah. But 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 he's like, here's the catch, Paul. And Paul's not having any of it. He's just like he's like he's he's probably had been offered this before. Yeah. So he's just like, what what's the catch? He's According like, to Mallory, he's never been offered this before because it's the only camp doing this. And Thatcher goes, he's like, look, here are the rules. If you, we hunt you, we start at dawn. If you can make it by sundown, you're free. You get these ID cards. Do we get any guns? No. But you have guns? Yes. Of course. But well, you get a head start. Well, yes, yeah, because like, Paul is like, I mean, I'm listening, but how about we sweeten the deal? Let us have guns, too. It's like, no, 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 no. That ain't how it works. We get the weapons. You don't have anything. He's like, fuck that. I'm not interested in that. All. Chris is like... If we can get the fuck out of here, I'll do anything. Yeah, yeah. She's just like, I can't survive another day. I had to shower. Well, she has been fucking macked on twice by Red. Right. Like, she she might have got a fistful. now. Yeah, she might have got a fistful of his dick. We don't know. Right. And so, but Paul, he's read the art of the deal. So he's just like, how about this? Give us a three-hour head start. That's doable. Of course, they don't do that, but he's no. just like, it's doable. We can do that. Thatcher, of course, is just chewing on a fucking hand-carved pipe. Right. Which, good good, good character work here. I so love Paul's it. like, okay, we're all in. He makes a decision for everybody. He's like, we're all in. Well, Dodge was just like, <laughs> this is my ticket out here. He just grabs it. He's kissing it. He's like, I can't wait. I told everybody yeah, so I was going to well, it's, it's Rita, Paul, Chris, Dodge, and Griff. Is Griff here? No, Griff's no. the later, yeah. No, because somebody says, Paul says, you get, get rid of Dodge. He's a piece of shit. I don't want him. <laughs> Give me Griff. And he's like, no, 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 no. Griff's not going anywhere. So there you go. Those are the rules. And Griff's not going. Because so Chip and Dale Griff is a badass. Right. Uh, I agree. So they walk out, and then uh, Jennifer and Tito come in, and he's like, we got it. Because this, well, I will say, this movie does a great job setting the rules. Yeah. yeah so, so Thatcher's like, remember, people. They're not. They're not inside. They're outside now. Yeah. They're all gathered on uh, the balcony because again, this is a plantation house, so a big fucking well, or not porch. balcony porch is yeah. what I meant to say. Covered porch with the f- ceiling fan and everything. They yeah. got the lemonade, the sweet tea, which no one's touching because sweet tea is the most disgusting drink in the fucking world. And they're all just looking out there. And yeah, Mallory comes out to ex- or, excuse me, Thatcher comes out to explain the rules to all of his contestants here. He's like, you only have 
one target, the one you picked, no poaching. You can't go after someone else's target. Right. So then Jen, we get a scene where Jen and Tito are chilling. And we, get, we get all of our contestants now, right. our, 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 our hunter, hunted. Hunters. Well, I, uh, Hunt. the, the people being hunted yeah. are walking by, and they're locking eyes with the people right. are hunting them. And right. it, it, it was a good scene. I really liked it. It was chilling. And you're just seeing how they're looking down on them. You got these, these fucking upper class people. Right. I loved it. It was a good scene, so I had to mention it. I'm and sorry. That, okay. And then so we cut to Jen and Tito. They're still on the, the covered the, porch. The porch, the veranda. And she's getting her she her her weapon is the crossbow. And of course, we got to explain it to the audience. So Tito what? is curious. He's like, hmm, "What's this?" And he's like, "Well, these here with the red band around them, these have really fucked up barbed tips. You can't pull these fucking out." Oh, yeah. Tread well, you. that makes sense. Those tips were huge. Right. And, and she's and she's like screwing the tips onto these yeah. special like quivers. Yep. And then he's like, "Well, how about what about these with the white ones?" She's like, explosive. Yes. And, and so, then she had a third one. Which were also explosive. Which no, they were sparklers. Oh, they were, they were like, you they were know like, what? They're they were, jubilees. <laughs> they were like glitters. They were jubilees because they were just like little bit of fire. And, and she did a little, uh, a little uh, demonstration. She shoots at the, one of the guards, and it yep. just, it just poof, and it's like a little. It's just a sparkler. Yeah, yeah, it's a sparkler, and the guards are all like, ah, it's awful. But then Tito tells her, "Oh, I see. You have your eccentricities as well. I forget what word I used because eccentricities, it was eccentricities, whatever. Back in the barracks, this is their. their this is the to, night before day right. four when we're gonna when this crew is gonna get to go be hunted. Apparently, Dodd is full of himself. He's got his coke bottle glasses so high up, his nose held up to the ceiling. He's just like, I told all you motherfuckers I was gonna get out of here. Look at this, I have a get out of free jail card. Wait, did get I do that of, backwards? Get out of jail free card. Oh, my God, Griff. And he pulls brain. up his sleeve, and he's got that knife, a perfectly adequate size knife. Yeah. You might say I have an edge on the competition. And Griff notices it. He's like, that's the knife I fucking buried. You motherfucker. And he goes right for the throw to fucking dodge. Yeah. And a fight ensues. Well, it is quickly pulled apart. There's a bell dinging in the background. Refs are rushing in, and then fucking Thatcher and his crew come. I got to give this to Thatcher. Despite being a fucking crazy camp uh, or uh, yeah, um, prison warden guy yeah. kind of here, he's he led the crew in He's there. hands on. He had a fucking AK with him. Yes, he did. And he puts it right up to Griff's eyeball. He also had his medical bag there, too, just in case the situation got out. of. He was only there to help people in medical situations. And he's like, I've had it up to here. And with he you puts it right up to his neck with you, Griff. Griffin. Oh. You're going to be a part of the hunt, too. Yep. You're going to be my special project. Mm. So we're going to the next morning. We got they're, they're, they're lined up right in front of the gate. They're doing fucking stretches. Oh, you, know what, you know what we got to bring up is the fact that uh, Paul has been teasing with Ritter. So in the moment when they get their IDs, he's like fucking with Paul. He's <laughs> like, or not fucking with Paul. He's fucking with Ritter. He's like slapping him in the face. And then he's like backing up and... Thatcher's like, no, 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 he's right. right. He's right. You got to there, wait. There's a great move, mo- moment between him and Ritter coming up. Yeah. Right. I, no, I wanted yeah. to build that up okay. so you could get the real yeah. fucking punchline there. Okay. And so, yeah, we're in the next morning, and Griff's telling – Griff had told – Griff, I, I'm so great. So, <laughs> Goblin Griff over here. So, um, Paul was telling Chris, like, don't worry. We'll get out together, and I'll help you out. Right. And they're like, oh, no, 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 no. She goes first. You go last. Yeah, every 30 minutes, we're going to release a prisoner. Right. So we're in the next morning. We got all the guards lined up. They're all there. All of our uh, soon-to-be hunted, they're there. Yeah. Chris is released, and she's like, oh, and she's already crying. She's already <laughs> crying. <laughs> and she takes off. And then uh, a couple minutes later, Jennifer on her horse, not even getting for any of them kind of a shot. This one, this one little woman's got to run. Right. She's like, I'm going to fucking chase her. And then every time they release somebody, then we see one of the hunters file. And then finally, it's Paul's turn. Well, Murray, okay. I didn't think you were going to go that far with it. So, uh, of course, you know, you've got people standing around. They, like, let Griff go. And Chris or uh, Jennifer is the one that's confused by it because she was just like, wait, what the fuck is he doing out here? Like, are you getting two for yourself? And he's like, oh, he's not for sport. He's for execution. And so then we let Dodge out, and they don't just let Dodge out. They take his glasses yeah, from Ritter him. Ritter grabs his glasses. Hey, can I stay? And then Red's like, whip, whipping his dick at him. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, man. And then Griff goes, yep. and Tito takes off. 
<laughs> with, with the Wolfman. And, and I want to point out. Yeah. The, the, the vehicles it, in this movie are well, amazing. They, 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 they even said, like, this was the shit we could afford. Yeah. So it was like, so. Well, one of them looked like a half-ass Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Yes, that's what I wrote in the notes. It's, yeah. It is. It's a fucking Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. And the other one is supposed to be, like, a front-loading, like, construction yeah. thing that Alf and uh, uh, Tito have. Alf? Grinning from ear to ear. He's like loving Dude, it. Dude, Elm is so good. <laughs> and when you told me there's a werewolf in this movie, I was like, oh, Jesus. It works. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. I mean, I hear these camps are alive and well from a certain correspondent, and he's gone to a few of them as a prisoner and fucking snapped the neck of a few werewolves. But I won't so, say who that is. They got a front loader, but it also has a machine gun mounted on it, too. So it is it is all, okay, all okay, terrain okay. vehicle. So they, they 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 go right off there after Dodge. So that's of course when we see our last deplorables being escorted out, and we have Griff and we have Rita, and of course or not Griff Paul and uh, Rita, and of course Rita is Jennifer's target. So when right. Rita runs out, that's when we get Jennifer. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because I forget Mallory is. Yeah, you, you, you yeah, were getting excited. It's okay. okay. It's better than you yawning during the episode. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little excited. That's no problem. I can't wait to hunt. I can't. I mean, we I get know. on Joe, Jack. You know, we get so many people. We started this episode an hour later than usual because Murray's like, show me the towers because we built watchtowers in the, in the island so you right. could hunt from them. Right. So we wanted to go see them. And right. we we're just having a good time giggling with a couple <laughs> girls, you know, yeah. just a good time. So, yeah, so then finally it's Paul's turn. Paul's turn. Paul, smug as ever. He goes up to Ritter. Weave again. He's been fucking with Ritter for so long here. Kisses his hand, blows a kiss to Ritter, and then, like, just like when you put your hand out and you pull it away, he grabs his ass. He's like, kiss my ass, Ritter. Ritter's like, Arr! steam comes out Ritter's ears. His mustache curled out of anger. <laughs> yeah. Steam came out of the ears. You're so right. And then he fucking flexed. And a fucking uh, cannonball right. formed. And then Paul, like, jogged out backwards. He's just like, hey, I, I'm not scared of you. Yeah, he's fuckers. grabbed his dick, too. Right. And then stuck his tongue out and did the thing where they pull their eyelid down, which I don't understand. It's like, it's an anime. <laughs> I can't explain anything anime-related. <laughs> anime. Anima. Anima. So the hunt is on. The first person we see is Dodge and... I never thought this man was athletic to begin with, and sure enough, he's running, and he's like Steven Seagal. He doesn't know what to do with his <laughs> limbs. He's fucking, he looks like Heather Lockley or dancing, and this, uh, well, they're and in like a wide open chips. Like, field. He, the, the objects is get to the jungle where you can hide. Right, so. you should be in heavy brush or something so right. you can hide. He finds the most open, right. easily accessible right. by vehicle place. And again, Steven Seagal run. <laughs> Ow! I just, I'm, I'm hitting laptops, I'm hitting the table. And so he immediately gets caught by his hunters. He gets run over. Well, no, not literally. Run... Not literally. Okay. Well, no, li I take it back. Literally, but he doesn't get run over the wheels. He just yeah. run over him. Yes. Okay. Okay. Because he falls down, yep. run over him, and then they stop, and then he's like, "Alf, my boy, grab him." And he's like, what should we do with him? Yeah, Alf. Again, Alf is very controlled, so they're trying to confuse you about how werewolf knowledge. But again, I trust Chris. I know Chris better than I know Cheeto. So he's telling Tito, or telling uh, Tarantino, Alf. apparently. Yeah, Tarantino, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> because he's like, I'm in defeat. Uh, I think we'll play a little squid game with him. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. This little piggy went to hell. And they, <laughs> then, then wow, Alf rips the toe off his shoe. Al Alf is still in the roast beef thing. He's right. grabbing each toe, and he gets the bit. He gets, uh, it was roast beef, roast beef, the big toe? That seems like roast beef. So Piggy, I, what, I think that one goes to market. Oh, really? Okay. So he grabs the market. This so, yeah, this, uh, here it is. This little piggy <laughs> went, went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee, wee, wee all the way home. So he grabs the big toe. I forget which yeah, one that market. was. Market. The market. And he's just like, no, 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 no. That would. Uh, it would hamper him too much. Too much. Yeah. And then he goes down the line. He goes all the way wee, wee, wee home. And he's like. That's the one. So I was expecting him to bite it off. He rips the toe off. He rips it off. And then he's like pops it in his mouth like a piece of like popcorn. And the crunch on that toe, <laughs> I don't know if that's accurate. We're going to have to interview a cannibal or two and figure out if that's accurate. Maybe Dodge would know. And then they just release them again because they're just toying with these They want to toy with them. Right. That's my favorite toe. Griff, the only competent one here, makes it into the jungle. That's right. 
And he sets, he's already set a trap. So he's like, hmm, I'll make it look like I went around this tree by really over accentuating my footprints. Yeah. Like, and then I'm going to climb up this tree and wait and uh, wait. And for we're it. in the dog eat dog world of the jungle world. Trees that are, you know, 40, 50, 60,000 feet tall have vines all over him, so he's very easily easily grabs onto a vine after he stomps those footprints in there, and he just scales himself up there just like I can do. You don't even need legs to get him off here. So he's just up waiting. body strength. Yeah, he's waiting. He's the hunt. The hunted has become the hunter. Exactly. Now, and Paul, he makes it for he, uh, some waterfall. This is, I don't know why you would do this. I like. Did you like the fact that they all have yellow? Um, I can't remember the name of the shoes that they're very popular. Converse, Even the yeah. Converse. They all have yellow Converse's and banana yellow uh, jumpsuits. Uh-huh. So they made them match. Yes. Very interesting. So he's at a waterfall climbing a cliff face. Yeah. I, I, that doesn't make sense. To me. Right out in the open, by the way. <laughs> and right out in the open because uh, Thatcher is watching him. He's, he's just chilling on the Wienermobile. He's got his sniper rifle. He's murmuring to himself, do I take the easy kill? Do I play it up a little bit more? Do I take out a leg? What do I do here? And we've already seen that these fucking hunters, they're into teasing. Right. They know something these hunt heads well, don't they, know. They, because there's nothing hard about the hunt. It's all rigged in their favor. Are you saying it's not a hard target? No, not at all. It's a very soft target. No chance Bordeaux's on this island. No. So he just starts shooting in the vicinity, like, fucking with him. Yes. And Paul sees he's like, Thatcher, you pig! It forces uh, Paul to jump off because he thinks right. he's going to get shot. He jumps off into, uh, well, the pool of water at the bottom of the waterfall. And he continues to get just shots all around him. But Yeah, because he's just like, he's just, a, he's, he's got him right in his cross. He's like, too easy. So yeah. he's like, and then he calls in Red, who's on the hunt for Griff. Because he's got two, remember, Thatcher's got two guys he's got right. to fuck with. One to hunt and one to execute. And Red's apparently. like, hey, boss, I found the tracks. They're perfect, man. And he's he's, he's like, over and out. <laughs> and then he goes looking around the tree. Meanwhile, Griff is following around the tree. They're doing a little thing where they're just following each other around this fucking tree. And then Griff just lets him have it and starts wailing on his fucking ass. Mm-hmm. Beats the shit out of him. He's calling, Thatcher, he's got me. Thatcher's like, what? I can't hear you. You're not coming through. Did you say over? I, I, uh, I already ceased communication. I, did, he's, I, did I hear a Roger? I don't hear that. And so he he doesn't get that Griff's beating the shit out of Red. Because Red is an elderly man. Right. I mean, I don't know why he's a guard here. Right. Well, I mean, I, he is good at uh, terrorizing smaller people. So I, I feel like his level of evil just works well in a guard situation. Yes. I mean, he would be perfect for ice, probably. Probably. Chris just found a place to cry. She's just holed up crying somewhere. Oh, my God. After going through all this action, and then you just cut to Chris, who's literally just, like, in an open field on a tree stump that had been recently cut, so they know where it's at. She's just sitting there crying. She's just sitting there crying. Paul knows that the best defense is a good offense. So he... Decides he climbs up on this mountain and he sees the Wiener Mobile because it's blasting. I've had an Oscar Mayer Wiener. <laughs> it also has a <laughs> giant flag on it, yeah. so it's like everything about this. Is Frank so Grills would that be a perfect vehicle? Frank Grills. We need to look in if that's available. We need to look <laughs> so. Still, have you ever, still the greatest have fucking you ever, mascot. Have you ever how great the Frank Grills mascot is? <laughs> Best you, mascot have podcast. Have you ever actually seen the Oscar Mayer be- Oscar Mayer my be- In person, no. I have twice. Wow. On the road and everything. Wow. Lost my mind. One of the road trips we did to Florida with my family. Does where Oscar Mayer Wiener just perpetually on the roads of America and never stops? It just drives like, around? Like, well, it was great advertisement. For the longest time, I thought it was an Oscar Mayer man. And I would get the Oscar Mayer Wiener hot dogs, and I realized I didn't really care for them that much. Now I'm Kogels. Got to get that snap, dog. So Paul doesn't like him either because he sets up an avalanche, which a couple styrofoam rocks. This is the most pathetic avalanche I've ever seen. <laughs> but, oh, I see it, Wiener Mobile. <laughs> but it does block off the road that 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 Thatcher was driving. I will say this movie has not done a good job of giving us a lay of the land, so this means nothing to me. The fact that he blocked off this road, it means nothing. Yeah, to me. it is very vague. Well, right. It's just like, okay, so you failed at a murder attempt <laughs> is what I'm understanding here. 
Cut to Griff. Griff's got the gun now that he got from Red. Right. Rita sees that. Rita's, she's just a horse. She doesn't have protection. She, so a horse usually latch on to the strongest man, you know. So she's like, Griff, I'll suck your dick if you just fucking rescue me. He's like, now nah, I think I'm going to do that. I want to fucking kill some people. Well, I like the minute ago you said the best offense is the, or the best defense is the good offense because this was Griff's line here right. where he's like, I'm going to go fucking kill these people. You might have a chance. On your own, I'm gonna go basically get myself killed because the best the best defense is a good offense. And so he just says, "Fuck off, you're on your own, bitch." She's like, and so she's she's, like, but give her she doesn't cry, she doesn't pull a Chris, and she's like, she's like, "I'm hot, I'm gonna go find a nice lake to cool off in." Meanwhile, we go over and uh, Griff, he's just. He's like a lion on the hunt here. Right. He's just in the tall grass and everything, and he sees an Oscar. <laughs> it's an Oscar Mayer mobile <laughs> driving along, hunting some humans. And he gets down in the grass. But then he looks over, and there's a fuck woman on a horse. Right. So he's like, what the fuck? And he just starts shooting at. I, I don't remember if he shot at uh, Thatcher or the, uh, I Jennifer first. I think, I think he yeah, shoots at Thatcher, I believe. And then, first of all, breaking the rules, Jen. But that's why I guess that's what she does because she starts firing her explosive arrows at Griff. Right. And Griff's like, what the fuck? Because this is a sparkler. So Griff's is confused. He's like, am I supposed to be scared by this? I am so concerned about this because it's like, is Jennifer a terrible shot or is she to- She's toying, toying with him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's a per- – she's a- no, she's bullseye because when she pulls out the barbed heads, she hits them multiple fucking times. This is true. So this she hits true. them in one arm, then the other, then a leg, then the other leg. He's this comes totally- later. Uh, so right now what we have is just that he's firing off. He's trying to – Griff is trying to keep everybody at bay. But here's the problem. He's got one enemy at like his uh, – we'll call it 10 o'clock and then another person at 3 o'clock. So – and he's got no cover here. He's just in the open grass. So Grass just, is his cover. What's that? Just, grass is his well, cover. Well, yeah, yeah. But he, he doesn't have like a rock to hide behind, right. a, you know, black bullets off or anything. So he's trying to fire off, keep him at bay and everything. But Jen, she's just coming in closer and closer, trying to flush him out. And so it's just giving Thatcher more of a chance to get, like, a good shot and everything. But, of course, Jen just keeps missing because she's toying with him. When finally Thatcher's like, Jen, you bitch, you don't take my target. And he runs back to, like, his car. The Wienermobile, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, again, Thatcher's trying to tell him, that's my kill. Don't you stay the fuck away from him, you bitch. And she's just like, I'm just softening him up. And she's just peppering him with fucking This is Yeah, arrows. this is where she finally, like, closes in on him because maybe Griff ran out of ammo or something. But she gets one arrow into his right arm, then one arrow into his left arm, then one other one into his shoulder. And she gets close enough where she gets one to his leg, and then Griff's just clawing his way out to the road. And Thatcher, for whatever reason, got in his car. Yeah, and then you hear, you're fine, I'm out, and you're like, what? We know what that means. And he just runs over Griff. Goodbye, Griff. You were too beautiful to be a Chippendale dancer, to be honest. So now we're back to what's up with Dodge and our boys, Alf and Tito. They've got him pinned down. And Tito's like, Alf. Play with him for a while. So Alf is like, all right. He just grabs him, takes him to a, a secluded spot, and starts doing wrestling moves on him like it's like a big brother doing practice wrestling moves yeah, on a little brother. I was thinking about this a lot because I was like, that was really weird. I was like, take him over here where it's just like the same spot, but it's like there's a little bit of brush in front well, to block yeah. the camera. Yeah, obviously, yeah, there's a mattress that he's yeah, being thrown on. It's so funny, but I just love that. And then and he's having the time of his life. Big smile on his face. He's just body slamming him, power bombing him. He went, would you say he went full Canadian uh, driver R- Ronnie Garvin on him? <laughs> no. Werewolf Garvin. I don't uh, think he put his balls on Ronnie him at all. Werewolf. But well, he, he did shine up his fist, and he did headbutt him. And then uh, Tito's like, "I've had, I've, I've run bold with him. Put him in the backbreaker." And he's like, "All right." So fucking uh, Alf just snaps, fucking dodges back on his knee. Again, this is why I was saying Tito's into some weird shit because he seemed to be cucking out on this. He's got oh, that he cigarette. Oh, he definitely had an erection. He oh, man. Erection. He was really into it. So now Mallory, who, of course, has to have Ritter with him because Mallory's just, he's just a sex creep. He knows nothing about hunting. So Ritter's like his like, guy. To, Are you okay, sir? I'll guide you. And they're, like, they're on the trail of Chris because they can hear. <laughs> they're, just following, they're following around the 
All they hear is her whimpering, so they're they're following her. Yeah, well, they're literally following her trail of tears. Right. And she finds, like, a trench yeah. just there. There, which, there was a giant trench in the ground That had here. some dead bodies in it, it a mummified did. dead yeah, bodies. A little bit of a... A little bit of a spoiler alert. Yeah, a little Raiders of the Lost Ark for me. Yeah, or uh, Alan Quartermain. So she's just like, I'm just going to go in this ditch and cry. Yeah. And that's what she does. And while that's going on, we see... Uh, well, Mallory and uh, Ritter, they end up coming right to that ditch, and they just stop. And Ritter's just telling them, look, I know these lands. We're flushing her out right to this spot. I plan on... So you don't have to worry about anything. And Mallory, he's just touching his gut. He's just like, oh, I love you. He's swishing a glass of brandy. He's just been uh, carrying a brandy around. And that's why he's got Ritter with him because he's like, I don't want to get my hands dirty. I want to right. fuck this bitch. Yeah, I want you to actually strip her clothes off, hold her down while I have sex. Yeah, I want you to prime her buns for my dick. And Ritter's like, whatever you say, sir. Right. You, and he's like, you know, I like the cut of your jib, young man. Right. You are going to take over with it. But yes. that's your moves up. Who do you? Who do I? Th- you're my boy. You're gonna take over this camp. I like that he said when Thatcher moves up with a wink. Right. So there's something mischievous happening here. Ritter is working his way up. He's like, I know you'll keep these camps in better conditions than he did. He's like, right. I'll kill them all. Right. Because all these people are scumbags. You can't yeah. trust any of these. People. Right. You cannot recondition a person once they go deep state. Once they go to Twitter jail, you just gotta flush them out. Well, that's going on, Chris, he's, he's sitting by a mummified corpse, and of course a snake just comes out of the mouth, very, like I said, very Raiders of the Lost Ark. Very Raiders of the Lost Ark. And she, has, she shrieks, of course, because anything scares her. Right. And they're like, we got her, sir! It could have been a fucking magical unicorn, like, jump on my back and I'll save you, and she would shriek and cry and run. And so, I, so cut away to Thatcher again. Thatcher loading up Griff in his little wienermobile, his little compartment... And he's talking with Jen, and he's like, Jen, why don't you worry about your prey? Why are you fucking with my shit? Why are you cock-blocking me? Yeah, we get the name thrown around a little bit here. In the mo- last moment we have with Mallory and Thatcher, they're using, like, don't worry about your turkey. I'll get your turkey. And then, you know, they're talking about, you got to worry about your own turkey here. So I like the way they refer to prisoners as turkey. Right. Again, we got to bring this back to Thanksgiving, Murray. Right. So we got to bring in the fact that they call the hunted uh, targets turkeys. So... Uh, they're still, they're still ch- no, Mallory and Ritter are still chasing after Chris. And while they do, meanwhile, they find they find our boy Red tied up where Griff had left him. Yeah. And so Ritter is just having such a field day with his, like, Red, oh, Red, always oh, stick your dick out, helicoptering girls behind the dumpster. God, we'll get you down from here. I see you already had your dick out. <sighs> you must have been pretty bored hanging upside down here. Right. And so we try to get him out, but he's got a ball gag in his mouth. Right. Yeah. So he's chopping him down, and Red is trying to like signal to him, like, don't do this, please. And suddenly, whatever triggers, I don't know how Griff had the time to do this <laughs> home alone trap, because he has sharpened giant logs down to yeah. punji sticks, giant <laughs> fucking spears. And so Red thinks he's about to get cut down. And suddenly these spears come out of nowhere. And just, I just think impaled. the idea was he was supposed to hit Ritter, but yes. then Ritter like pulled Red in the front of, the front yes. of it. So Red gets it in the dick or something. He like yes. or in the ass. I Kill think. him in the dick. Yeah. It got him in the dick. Okay. And his ass is killed over and pointing up in the air. And I like this because they didn't do a long like obtrusive fart. They just did a gentle <laughs> little fart here. Little I, I'm serious. They it was just like <laughs> that's it. <laughs> And I don't know why they did that sound effect, but I was like, wait, did they really do that? And I went back and rewound it three times, and they did that. He gets hit with the punji sticks. You see him. His tongue sticks out, and goes. That's all you need. We, there's nothing left to say. There's nothing because, left so to now, say. What's, we haven't checked in with Rita. What is she doing? Well, she's playfully splashing through a river. Playfully. She is getting her jumpsuit all wet, so you're like, I like the curvatures of this lady here. And as we're seeing and assessing the you know, the curvatures here, we have a character who's also assessing the curvatures here. Well, Jen, she's like, I finally found my turkey. So she just starts shooting off some of those sparkler uh, arrows. Her at thing her. is the toy with people. We've talked about this. Right. Rita's like, I know what I'll do. I'm just going to hide in this hole in this tree. Oh, my God. The worst hiding <laughs> spot ever. This because is like, you can clearly see. They can see each other. They're yeah, like right across from They're the- staring into each other's <laughs> eyes while she prepares another crossbow. So, again, she is just teasing with her. Yeah. So she gets up and runs away. But she ends up getting herself into some – she trips, let's just say. 
And so Jen is able to catch up to her. Right. And she pulls out one of the white arrows or white cross bolts, so we know right. what that means. She's got the explosive one or mm-hmm. something? I don't know. And she's got her horse riding cap on, and she takes it off, and she lets her hair down. And we all know what that means. Well, like, well that's the whole thing. Like, if you ever see, like, a nerd, I'm using air quotes, nerd girl with her hair up and her glasses, and then she takes her hair down, you're like, oh, my God. Well, think Grease. <laughs> Jennifer Love Lawrence, or what was her name? Olivia Newton-John. Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> Jennifer Love Norris. I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> no. Um, but whenever you see the good girl turn into the bad girl, you know it's because she wants to fuck. Goody two-shoe. I so we, again, my theory of it's all about fucking comes back into play here because clearly all she wants to do is fuck. Fuck Murray. Well, yeah, that's kind of obvious, Griff. Because and she literally goes, "Never never come at me!" Like her tongue, like sticking out of her mouth. Yeah, it was a little over the top. And so, <laughs> Murray had to correct me on this <laughs> because I don't remember this happening. I what we, we I don't, remember. We don't, don't, don't it's okay, later. It's okay, later. okay, okay. So we were just like, "Oh my god, she's going in for the fucking you know uh, French kiss." She's just got the tongue out. Yeah, and everything. And what I'm assuming here is that she is just she wants to keep her sexual pet around. So I'm thinking that when we cut away, we're gonna come back to her and she's gonna be like, "Look, just stay here. I'll come by. I'll fuck you five no. times a week and feed you." She's more evil than that, but that's for later because now. Uh, Tito and Alpha caught up with Paul. They're just breaking the rules. This is fucking. Everyone wants Thatcher's fucking dudes. That's right. And so. I mean, uh, these are all fucking people who are willing to pay to murder people. So, of course, they're going to break the rules. I don't even know they're paying. I think they're, this is like, like favors they're getting. Well, they're paying in a different kind of currency Bitcoin, NFTs. Oh, okay. So he's like, Alpha, my boy, get him. So Alpha's like, Fuck yeah, I'm yeah. into it. Driving by at 40 miles an hour on their little fucking Humvee <laughs> weird uh, uh, front loader thing. Shit eating grin on Alf. He's just like, this is fun. I like yeah, this. Yeah, suit- Speed's being put in a cage in a circus. He's still his suit jacket's still intact and everything. It's not right. tattered at all. Yeah, like still, it's he's, crisp white somehow. Yeah, he's fucking suave. So he pops out. He fucking hammers the shit out of Paul <laughs> Tito. Oh my boy, I love it. Pin him against the tree. Yeah, Pin like, him I, against the tree. I have an idea. Pin him against the tree. Gets it, out. He's got the. He's so evil. He's got a cigarette holder. Like of the, you know, Corella Deville. Come on, <laughs> yeah. you know evil. Right. So he's like, and then he gets revs up the old ATV, and then the object was they're gonna just slam it right into Paul. Right. Paul's got some ideas of his own. Yeah, because he's scrap. He's he's standing up, but somehow he's reaching onto the ground. He must have really fucking long arms. Because then he finds a- no 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 he ra- he breaks a branch off oh, the tree. Oh, that makes more sense. So he grabs up and he grabs a branch and he stabs Elf, poor Elf, poor naive boy, boyish Elf, in the eyeball with a fucking branch, <sighs> tree branch. Of course, that stuns fucking Elf. So Elf lets him go, and then he goes yoink, and they switch places. And Tito, Tito already, could have stopped. I tell you, Tito could have stopped. He already put it in fourth gear. What are you talking about? There's nah, no breaking at that he point. He had this idea. He wanted to see somebody get chopped in half. And he's like, I don't care who it is. Oh, okay. You know, I he, mean, he, he's again, evil. We just saw the cigarette holder, dude. He's willing to break the blockchain. So he's willing to bla- break the fucking werewolf chain. He's like, I've been to other circuses. I, like, I can get another werewolf. That's, how, it's, that's the thing. People are just disposable to these people. That's that's it. And he was only into him for the cucking. He, it was a sexual thing. He's like, I can find another werewolf. So he rams into uh, into Alf, hits him in the right under the butt. He somehow chops him in half because <laughs> we see this horrible, like old school practical effect where you just see yeah. like, like some pants full of, of like meat that just yeah, falls yeah, down. Yeah. And I love this because after he sees that Paul's running away, and after he's really stopped to watch fucking you know the meat being tossed. <laughs> He turns and pulls out a fucking rocket launcher. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got to point out, Alf is still smiling, being chopped in half. <laughs> He's just like, this is he's like, this is, this is, a, this is the best sh- day ever. So he I goes see, out with a smile on his face. I love it. Even my cat, who's decided to join us for you know this part of the episode, is smiling. He loves this shit. Yeah, too. Tito. He does his best. Chuck Norris. It's time. And pulls out the rocket launcher. Shoots it at Paul, misses him. Well, we know rockets, you can only hit them if you're, like, 10 feet away from your target. Chuck Norris was 10 feet away from Rostov when he did that. So so he, wa- he, he while this is going on, Ritter, uh, Chris had run into this field of, like, sugar cane or some shit. 
And he's like, I got an idea, sir, to Mallory. I'm going to go around the back. I'm going to set fire to the fucking sugar cane. And we're going to flush it out right to you. It's just tall grass, man. Well, they called it cane in the fucking thing. Oh, did they? So, okay. I don't know if it's sugar cane. It could be another cane. And so, like, Mallory's like, hey, as long as I don't have to do anything, I'm, I'm into it. So what's going on? Paul also just stumbles into this fucking area. So that now dude, we got all this grass is on fire. Yeah. And then uh, Mallory, he's like, I can't wait for this pussy. So he runs in, grabs Chris. Right. He, again, we got, so we're, Paul comes up on the outbrush of it, but he, he's seeing all the fire. He comes around because he hears Mallory. He's caught well, Chris. Here's the, here's the whimpering of Chris because that's all she does. Right. He, Mallory catches Chris. And so Chris is shrieking out. He's, he's going to rape her in the middle of this fucking inferno. That's how fucking horny he is. Well, that's got to be like some kind of billionaire's fucking thing. You know, they probably burn their own places down while they're fucking somebody in it just for the thrill of it all. So Paul bro- breaks it up. They struggle over the Snake Plissken gun. Paul gets it, shoots Mallory in the dick, paralyzing him because this is the dart gun. We, we spoke about it earlier. And as you, as you should do, they just left him there to burn alive. <laughs> so yeah. he just gets fucking burned alive. So now we're joining Paul and Chris. They're just running away. They're like floating down a river together and everything. Right. And you got you got Ritter who's like just fucking hacking through the woods. <laughs> You're like, okay, he's going to catch up to Well, them. he's got that treat that, that run in the camp. So he's just ready. To, he, he's ready, ready to go. Yeah, he, he can taste leadership on the horizon. Mm-hmm. So he's just like, I'm finally moving up. Meritocracy works. Capitalism is number one, a number one. This is not a communist movie. So he's just tasting that victory. And Paul and Chris, they finally get to the end of their little... They get to a beach. They get to a beach, and they're running out there. They have seen no other part of this (laughs) quote-unquote island. But Paul makes the very, very clear uh, uh, statement, we're on an island. It's been a trap the whole time. (laughs) Like, it's supposed to be at the level of Planet of the Apes, it's been Earth all along, you know? But it's like, you've yeah. seen one section of this quote-unquote yeah. island. You don't know. Well, we know that Paul is very much in love with his own voice and himself. He's very, you know, in love with himself. Like, so. they came in on a vehicle. I mean, they could have been dropped off or knocked off, uh-huh. knocked out. But still, it's like, you can't abandon hope by seeing one section of this place. It could be a peninsula. So they're just about to give up. But well, Paul's not about to give up. He's a slapster. Don't cry! Ritter pops out. Oh, yeah. And I mean, calmly says, I'm going to fuck you in the ass. Boy. He's throwing the boys around oh, big man. time. And he takes his machete and he chucks it into the sand. And even even I got to give it to Paul here. Even Paul is like, all right. And he's like, get in the food. And D- then we Duke's g- ready. And then, like you said at the beginning, it's fucking the Indiana Jones fight. In fact, even though I think both these movies came out at the same time, it's very weird how they reflect each other. That's right. And they're they're doing a little put them up, put them up, and they're punching each other back and forth. But fucking, on land, on land, for some reason, Paul has the edge. He is a foot and a half shorter, one hundred and fifty pounds lighter. And Ritter is just keeping up with the boxing, and he's got the reach and everything, but he's getting his ass handed to him. So out of a last-ditch effort, well, not even a last-ditch, ju- just out of, like, desperation, he thrusts himself at Paul, and it's like, why did you do this to begin with? And he, they, he tackles and he, and him into the water. He literally falls into a ditch. Yeah, they the literally last-ditch fall- effort. Yeah, last-ditch ditch effort. Full of water, and they start struggling, and then... Uh, but this is where Ritter has the upper hand, right. because he can't get as much energy on his punches and everything. And so Ritter just uses his reach and is uh, pushing him down into the fucking, uh, you know, know, the water. Water. Yeah. And so he's under there and we're like, oh, he's goner. It's been at least 10 seconds. But no, because there happens to be (laughs) what it really was was a sponge (laughs) with that some like red food coloring in it. Because he hits fucking uh, Ritter in the the head with a rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then he like obviously stuns Ritter and he gets away. So... Ritter is like stunned out. He's being, he's kind of coming to. He's getting out of the water, and oh, you know what he's got on his hip, everybody? It's a pistol. Well, it really wasn't his hip. It was, it was in his back. I don't know. Oh, it was in his back. I don't know why he had like the holster in maybe, his back. Maybe it, was, it got tossed around in the fight. I don't know. You know, so the the holster, the gun ends up in his back, and so he's reaching for there. But we've got this really cool shot where he's in the foreground, and in the background is Chris running. 
shrieking out, <laughs> which I don't understand. Ritter apparently got water in his ears. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst. I hate that. Yeah, because yeah. he's not hearing Chris. <laughs> And so he is taking shots, and he's missing, and he's missing, and he's missing. So he's like, he's like I need to go aim on a rock. Right. And he does. He, he needs to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Murray. And he does. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just painting a picture. Yeah, you really are. <laughs> the dog was blue. And he's got, he's got, we see right from his point of view, we see right Got the ass shot. They calm ball. all the sound. You just hear his breathing, and he's holding it in to take the shot. And suddenly, you just see you that overhead. Banshee shriek. <laughs> Apparently, when they were filming this scene, the the director like, okay, she's ready to like, you know, she got her arms up, and the director said, "Cut." And she was so into the scene, she almost fucking really oh cut my this God. motherfucker. Did she had a real machete. <laughs> yes. Oh shit. Oh, that's scary. So in the movie, she chops his hands off. Yeah. And then, oh, my God, this was the fun. Even the director point out, I should have cut this scene. Yeah, he should Because they literally put this guy with these huge fucking hands, his yes. hands in his in sleeves. sleeves. So you can clearly see his fucking hands, his long-ass arms. They didn't get a jacket that could easily, like, you you can hide it in and just, <laughs> no. like, cover it with, like, gore or anything. No, they, it, was, it was rough. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. But anyways, Chris, after doing this, she, again, shrieks out and runs aimlessly because that's Chris's job in this movie. She's supposed to be that character who doesn't know, understand what to do with her body and emotions. And, hey, I wouldn't know what to fucking do in these. If I cut somebody's hands off, I might run aimlessly. So I'll give her some slack here. But Paul, of course, his job is to catch up to her and tell her everything's okay. Put in the vice grip and the headlock. So he can get her into a nice therapy session and then fuck her for every year Well, there's that. like... Well, I guess we're on an island. I don't know what to do now. So how about we just head back to the to the compound? And while they're heading back, Tito in his little uh, ATVs there. Yep. And is it does does Paul set up a trap where he's like, Chris, just run off and distract him, right? Yeah. So they're running. Uh, so they they're running down this road, and it's clearly a road. It's all cut out because we're in like jungle and weirdness. And so he's coming down the hill. Okay, we're gonna run away. They run away. They get around a bend. He's like, okay, you hide over here. I'm going to run over here and get and distract him. So he jumps in. Paul jumps into the brush and everything. Tito decides to station up and start shooting off because he's got to get out to get in the back to use the mounted rifle and everything. So he gets off to do that. But then from behind him, he doesn't realize the trap that was set here. So this because is, we got Paul with the machete, and he sneaks up. Oh, on. did I have it backwards? Chris hides and Paul sneaks up on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get. Well, I, well Chris I, is the distraction. Chris it's, it's, is the distraction. She's hiding. Yeah, because okay. that's what she does. I, I, had, I had it backwards. And Paul sneaks up. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Paul's like the master tactician. He's like, all she can do is hide. So I'll have her do that. Right. He sneaks up on him, machete to the head. Punk. It's like and it's like the awful fucking you know thing with us. Like the arrow through the head gag oh, kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't even see the head. Like, from what uh, the version I saw, you just, you hear a thunk, and then it's just, you see blood trickling down a body, quote unquote. So now Pretty Tito cool. is dead, and... We uh, got uh, we get a cut of our camp guards who are carrying a body into Thatcher's Wienermobile. And uh, they're getting, they're, this is when Jen comes back out, and she's just like... You know, talking to him, and she's I like, don't, I don't think it's in her notes, but there, this is the scene that you didn't. Well, obviously, it's not in your notes because you didn't see the scene. Before that, we see Jen finishing up with Rita. The, okay, so we see Rita. Her jumpsuit's all shredded up. She's covered in blood, and she has an arrow going in her mouth and out her jaw. I don't know why I didn't see, like. I saw all the nudity and all the some of the gore and everything. I don't know why I missed this scene, but yeah, okay, this makes more sense for the transition and everything. Right. So that, yeah, now so she's done. So Rita is not her sexual slave. Well, she was. She probably molested her and did some shit well, to her and then killed her. Well, she was murdered, so she's not going to be her sexual slave. Well, well, she was for a moment. For a moment. Okay. Yeah. And so now she's got her kicks. You know, that's, that's how she, probably how she has an orgasm. She has to kill you. Right. 
So now she's all done. So she meets up with Thatcher. He's got uh, Griff's body being loaded into the. No, back. he already had Griff's body. This is Mallory's body. They oh, got, this was Mallory. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. Because she's like, "Who the hell is that?" He's like, "Mallory." I don't know what happened. Oh, and, yeah, that's right. And, and that's why Jen is pissed off because right. she's just like, "This whole thing is turning to shit." Which is, by the way, how all these we're gonna hunt men movies go. Right. Because there was a scene with I don't remember their names from Hard Target, where it's the exact same thing. Right. It's hubris. So she's like, oh, you fucked up again, Thatcher. I guess you're not leaving this island. And yeah. she just walks off. You were expecting to get two targets? I'm going to go ahead and get whatever the fuck kills I want. So now Paul and Chris have Tito's vehicle. <laughs> poor uh, uh, poor Olivia Hussey, because she looks... Obviously, I mean, I, I'm assuming Olivia Hussey's never touched a gun in her life. And it shows. You can't even act it. She's, like, literally flailing around on the back. It was sad. It was sad. It <laughs> yeah, was it sad. was pretty rough. When, they, when the stunt women did it, did it, it looked okay. But exactly. when she's doing it, it looks rough. Even Paul is telling her, please, please, <laughs> for the love of God, just look like a human being. Because she's functioning like she's an alien trying to discover what this shit is. So they're going to, they're gonna with just one machine gun, they're going to take out all the guards yeah. in the... In, and it takes convincing again to get Chris to start mowing people, to, mowing the guards down, and everything. And she's just shooting all over the place. But then we cut to we're we gonna get through this end real quick because nothing happens in this end here. Yeah, the, the ending is awful. Yeah, it, it's really bad. But so we, we get cut, the, well, the alarm goes off when they start opening fire. Right, and it's like okay, we know everything's hell, but the alarm actually triggers up to another headquarters. Right, and the headquarters <laughs> is like, all right, well, fuck it. We're gonna bomb it. <laughs> yeah, wipe out. It's like li- they're not gonna try wipe to wipe out. They're not gonna try to quell it at all. You know, it's like, it's like literally. Well, these people, the, the, most of the people there are the deplorable. So they're just like bomb them. Who the fuck cares? Well, yeah, but you're gonna lose some. Uh, so, well, I guess they don't care about the guards, but you lose that. Well, yeah, but you know what that means? They don't have to pay their health care anymore. Oh, so that makes sense. So that that's that, okay. I'm gonna be in a way now. I see this as a capitalism movie, an anti-capitalist movie. So we get... It's a, a prison for profit is what it is. We get a lot of stock footage of jets being launched and guys in cockpits flicking, like, levers that say bomb and all that shit. And they can't get a hold of Thatcher. And Thatcher's the one guy who say, no, I have it under control. But they're like, no, we can't get a hold of Thatcher, so go ahead with the bombing mission. So Paul's like, Chris, I got something you can do. Take out the radio. That's all you got to do. And so, suddenly Chris... She, for once, she's like she sucks it up. Maybe from getting a kill with the amount of machine yeah. gun, she's like, "I got this now." So she runs in full of confidence, Kate Moss confidence. Runs in, got, finds herself like a, a a fire poker or something, and starts no ba- a gun. She's using a gun. Okay, a gun. She starts bashing the radio control towers and everything. When Jen turns the corner on her. I don't know why Jen is now just using arrows without the crossbow. She's just got an arrow in her hand, and she pins her up against the wall, and and then like finally, finally, I'm, I'm expecting to see like how she seduces women and everything. Chris nuts up because yeah. she's like, "Fuck this shit." She's like, "I put up a lot of shit, but I'm I don't like lesbians." Yeah, I'm not into that. Yeah, so she they struggle with the arrow. Chris grabs it, shoves it in the Jen's face. We get a little boop, little sparkle goes off. A popcorn fart? Popcorn fart, and we just see like a dummy's head fall off. And we're like, okay, all right, Jen's dead now. So we go back outside. The guards, the deplorables, the deep state, the fucking... Eight the minutes Twitter to wipe trailers. out. Eight minutes to wipe out. And there's eight minutes of this movie, and it's literally just six minutes of them exchanging just, fire. Yeah. Well, we do get a nice shocker uh, scene. Where uh, where Thatcher gets blown away, where we see the a dummy just explode yeah, with like meat, that's right? Because so so Paul gets his revenge. He kills Thatcher, and then like you said, it's just random extras are shooting at each other and things exploding. I guess Paul realizes he killed Thatcher, and that was like he got rid of. He got Thatcher, so he's just like fuck it, let's go. So he backs everybody up because they were kind of like going through the camp, and so now it's they're like confusing. they There's get nothing. on the outskirts of the camp. The planes are coming over now. They bomb the camp very terribly. They drop like three bombs on it. And it's like half alive, maybe even more than that. But they're like, yeah, that's victory, But they right? kill all the guards. Yeah. And then we see, like, so we see in the background the, the camp on fire, and then the foreground, Chris and Paul come into the screen, and they just hug each other, walk off off scene. And, it, and then we get, a, we get a quote from, of course, H.G. Wells' most famous quote. Revolution begins with the misfits. There we go, Murray. And scene. 
Uh, so what just happened here is we had too much fun, and we turned a hour and like twenty minute movie into it was ninety three minutes into a lot of episode here. Well, well, we're gonna give another five minutes because I got something really big to explain. Let's hear it. Thanksgiving episode. If you are our. If you're a Twitter person, you already know what we're going to do, but I'm going to explain it to you because they, we still the poll. If you're listening to this, and if you're a super fan, you should be listening Wednesday night. You have a little over 12 hours left to vote on this poll. 12 hours, trick-or-treaters. <laughs> 12 hours until <laughs> Turkey Day. <laughs> Steven Seagal! We're going to do, well, you already know that, but if you don't, what's your fucking problem? If you don't follow us on Twitter at GNG Theater. The poll we decided for we every Thanksgiving, we let you, the listener, give us four choice. We give us give us some choices. We pick four, and then we let you vote. We switched it up this year. This year we're doing four, and we're going where no fucking podcast dared go before. We went into the straight to DVD world of Steven Seagal. Mm. We picked four movies. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Griff, can you ex- just yeah. distract them? I'm, I'm gonna. gonna pull I was just gonna say Murray's going right into his phone, so I'm, I'm gonna, gonna have to pull up. The I'm gonna give us all a little taste of what these choices are. If you haven't voted, if, if you're one of those assholes that waits the last minute, like you go out, you go Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve, oh, you're wow. waiting till the last minute to vote. I'm gonna tell you the four movies we picked, Griff. Can you distract him for a moment? Man, it doesn't even have this ready. He talked himself up there for like nine minutes and didn't even have himself ready. These are the four choices. Are, wait, it? do you still need me to distract? You're saying no, everything's so slow no. and elongated. This, thir- this turkey day, we celebrate the jivest of all turkeys, Steven Seagal, by doing what no same pa- podcast would do, delve into the straight-to-DVD oeuvre. Is that a St. Paul we cast? we picked four classics. I want to give you and want to give Classics? thanks to you, the listener, by letting you decide which one we do. Here are the nominees. Movie number one, Out for a Kill. Archaeology Professor Robert Burns. Less Indiana Jones, more Minnesota Fats. <laughs> Dig in China is being used as the front to smuggle drugs. When he's wrongly accused of murdering his assistant and his wife is killed in an explosion. Burns gets medieval on their asses. Mm, I like that. Movie number two, Today You Die. Oh, Honorable master thief Harlan Banks is wrongly convicted of murder. Can he and a bunch of washed up 90s rappers escape from prison to clear <laughs> his name? Sample dialogue about Seagal. Walks like a black man, breathes like a killer. <laughs> number three, Born to Raise Hell. Picked solely for this exchange from the trailer. Random nerd, I need to tell you something. Seagal, what's that, boy? How much you admire me? How much you want to be like me? Nerd, uh, yeah, yeah, that too. Pure, unadulterated Seagal. You know he punched up that script. Oh, yeah. And then the final one, which is in last place for some reason. I don't know why. This this intrigues me. Kill Switch. Not one, but two dueling serial killers are on the loose in Memphis. And Jacob Stilwell, the detective with the most solved cases in U.S. history, is put on their trail. It's just another case until Jacob's girlfriend becomes one of the victims. Oh. Now, How are it's people personal. not going for the true crime one? I have no fucking clue because we don't have any female listeners. Because <laughs> they love, you know, suburban uh, white women love serial killers. So there it is, people. You better fuck. If you haven't voted already, you better because you only got 12 hours. So we don't know. We, this is usually where we tease, but we don't even know what the hell we're going to do. You're, we'll, we'll find out same same week you do. So see you there. Well, it's a Thanksgiving uh, spectacular. Steven Seagal. I imagine everyone's prepping their, uh, uh, their, their test Thanksgiving dinner right now. So good luck. Right. You know, I know we're going to be – it's going to be distracting to listen to this while you're doing it. You're like – Getting the perfect spot on the parade route, you know. Yeah, you're doing all of that right listening. now while you're listening. But I, I mean, I'm like prepping my test stuffing, you know, next week when this is going to be out. So it's like you're, you got to you you're gotta, getting ready to watch what we do every week. The Lions lose. Uh, well, zero and seven. We're going for zero and seventeen. First team in history, dog. They're zero and eight. I think. Are they on eight? Yeah. I think it's seven. I'm pretty sure it's eight. It's like a tippy tap situation right now. Anyway, so. You're welcome. Look forward to our tippy tap about uh, m- mechophiles. 
<laughs> bringing it back around to that. Yeah. <laughs> Until yeah. then, keep it in a tailpipe. And keep it warm. <laughs>